You know, I've got chickens where I stay, né? in Pulugwan. Hard body. If you want one, I can give you. Mleko. <laughs> Even if they steal those chickens of mine, I will not call Advocate Tefu to represent me. Never. There is no skill at all. There is no decorum at all. Kuleko. On top. And he thinks this thing is about him. He has made the whole case about him. And that's why we can sit here to be asked a question about the advocate instead of being asked, how is the case going? Are you happy? We're not being asked about the case. I think he speaks loosely. You know, I've got chickens where I stay, né? in Pulugwan. Hard body. If you want one, I can give you. Mleko. <laughs> Even if they steal those chickens of mine, I will not call Advocate Tefu to represent me. Never. There is no skill at all. There is no decorum at all. He has got no respect for the bench at all. And he deserves no title of an advocate. I hope he doesn't belong to any bar because if there is any bar, it must take action on him. How does a lawyer, Floyd, say in court this fucked up situation? A lawyer? What trial? He undermines all of us, actually. Okay. Grand opening. Uh, Advocate Tefo, thank you very much for joining us. How are you, sir? Uh, I'm fine very much. I'm fine. I'm fine. Uh, yeah, thank you very much for joining us. How do you respond to that? Uh, this is Julius Malema, the leader of the Economic Freedom Fighters at a press conference talking mm. about your conduct in court. How do you respond to this? Yes, my response uh, <laughs> to Julius. Julius is Julius, man. I don't think there is anyone in this country who trusts Julius. He himself, he once said uh, um, there is no permanent friend. In the politics today, Nkululeko uh, is your friend. Tomorrow, it can be your your worst enemy. So, I've got a very strong view uh, with the powerful people in the politics, and then as much as the people in the um, media. You see, so I believe they belong to the cult <laughs> because. Especially in the media, they think that they can build you and they can destroy you at will. See, So this issue of Malema. Malema, when I was arrested, I think a day or two after my arrest mm -hmm. at court, he was so furious. He was my 120% supporter to extend that he lambasted ANC. Actually, he pointed this to the ANC making because he said when Advocate Tefu was about to uh, make a breakthrough so that the whole world can know what happened, then he was arrested. And he said he never said, uh, see such a thing. Indeed, I can say even myself, no, no matter how difficult or how painful it might have been, um, I broke the Guinness Book of Record because I'll be the first person, first lawyer, first advocate who was ever arrested in court by the state. Mm. You see, In the whole world? In the whole world. Since that thing happened, because the intention was all about to humiliate me, and then a uh, little thing, uh, little did they know is that that will put me on the map. Mm. Today, I've got the people that uh, contacted me as far as uh, Canada, USA, and down under, you are Australia. Then they want to know about me. Why, why such thing has ever happened? They say not even in the state or the country where the rulers or the, um, the leader is a dictator. Mm -hmm. Such has never happened. 
uh, we don't go far. Uh, let's go just to uh, go to Zimbabwe. I think you remember during the time of Mugabe, there was this guy, the lawyer. Um, I forgot his name. Mm -hmm. He was harassed. He was arrested left, right, center. But they never went to arrest that guy at court. They've arrested him at his own place or they'll rather go to his practice. But not at court. Mm -hmm. Because the court, uh, Mugabe himself, you'll understand this thing of separation of power. Yes. Yeah. You know, once you arrest a lawyer, well, he's attending to the certain case. Uh, in terms of a law, we'll say that trial will be affected. He said, uh, we'll say the purity of the trial is in question mm -hmm. because uh, that is intimidation. Yes. There will be no fair trial. So in South Africa, we've got the section 35, uh, subsection 3, the fair trial of the constitution. So what has happened there when I was arrested on the 28th of April, the intention was to make sure that I become scared and even my client become uh, so skeptic about uh, 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 my situation to say, look, uh, with this guy, it seems as if the things, I mean, we're not safe. You see, we'd rather find a new lawyer. Mm -hmm. It's what these people were intending to get. They wanted me out of that uh, case so that, but now, uh, little did they know is that I become more resolute after I was arrested. Mm -hmm. Actually, after my arrest, in the next appearance, that's where I could have announced my withdrawal. withdrawal yeah. Yes, but I didn't uh, do that. You see, I was waiting for the um, judge himself to announce this or to uh, uh, complain about this in the open court mm -hmm. to say, now, nah, why did that thing happen in my court? Because like I'm saying that it doesn't matter. All uh, whether you are the opponent, you are uh, the lawyer representing the accused. The accused might have been caused or committed a very heinous crime. Maybe even if they've killed the president, they've got the right to be represented, mm. and they've got the right to have their lawyer to be protected, and their rights be protected because our our law, the rule of law in this country is that. Uh, we've got the so-called presumption of innocent. Everyone presumed innocent until found Proven guilty by the court of law. Yeah. Uh, yes. let, let, can, can I just please stop you there? I'm so sorry. Mm. Um, so we will get to all of the other things that happened. Yeah. Um, I played this clip deliberately because I know it trended. Yeah. A lot of people were talking about it. Um, everyone seemingly is taking a shot at you regarding mm. your conduct. You yeah. said something about the cult. What do you mean by that in your response to Julius Malem? What does that mean? What, what is a cult? Yes. Um, all right. By the way, I was still on the issue of uh, the trust. Malema saying that uh, I hear that people saying that I'm I'm a populist. Mm -hmm. uh, I was admitted as an advocate on the fifth of January, two thousand and nine. So this year, I'm twelve years as an advocate. Mm -hmm. Yes, and then I qualify to be a senior counsel. Nonetheless, I'm still a junior counsel. In my second year as a practicing lawyer, I've uh, made, I've done the constitutional court matter, but it was in the labor, because I, I'm a specialist of the labor, actually. Mm -hmm. Yes, so somebody has been able to return to work after 10 years. That person was a superintendent at the Mount Green Hospital, uh, Mr. Baloy. I do have that uh, judgment of the constitutional court, whereby it was in a majority of 10 judges in my favor, written by uh, the former Deputy Justice uh, Musaneke, mm -hmm. and it was read by Sisi Khambembe. So I've got all the gurus in the constitutional court who were in favor. The only dissenting judge were two, Judge Cameroon and the other judge who was acting, Justice Mpatele. Only two. They said, no, if it was according to us, you wouldn't win this case. Mm -hmm. But the 10, uh, they are supporting me. So now, back to Malema, um, I answered this previously. I said, look, at school, I did history. You see, uh, when I was in the so-called grade 10 nowadays, during my time, it was from three. 
Because before I... St- <laughs> <laughs> so now, uh, because the reason I I dropped the maths in uh, in grade 10 is because when I'm given the homework every time, I will do the maths. I come right with the steps, with the steps. Mm-hmm. Then I tell myself, no, I'm doing the right thing. But tomorrow, when you have to correct the maths, my answer are not similar to the one that the teacher has to give. Mm-hmm. Then all, every time I have to make a corrections <laughs> with the maths, you see? Yeah. Then I realize, no, look, uh, they often say, um, the wise man changes his mind. Then that's when I realized, no, it's a time now in grade 10 to change my mind, leave the maths, and take history. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so, and then I became very good in history. I was even teaching other... Students. Uh, students, yeah, you see. So that's why today I'm, I'm a lawyer. Because the history is a good foundation uh, to be a lawyer. Because as a lawyer, what matters is the dates. That's why I'm so good in, in, uh, in remembering the dates. Mm. Even at court, what happened on this date, what happened, whatever, you see. So now, uh, we know, we all know that uh, we've made we've been made aware that uh, Julius Malema was... Uh, um, doing a woodwork at school. Mm. And he was not performing well. And I don't understand why he didn't change. If he's wise, he could have changed. He said, realizing that it's woodwork, as much as people may think it's so easy, but to me it's not easy. Let me change. Maybe if you could have done a BIPS, you know that subject called BIPS. No, what is BIPS? Biology. The biology. Uh, no, no, not biology, Bible, Bible study. Okay. <laughs> yeah, you could have done Bible study. Mm. Yeah, to change it and then maybe today you could have been a better person. So, does it not have a higher education qualification? I think at some point he pursued that. He has a degree or something like that. Uh, it's a degree, it's a degree in, in, in politics. Yeah, so yeah. he redeemed himself. If, if, you, if what you are implying is that uh, he was dribbled by woodwork. I'm saying that as he grew older and he matured, he redeemed himself to a point where he became a graduate. Yeah, for for that purpose, yes, and for uh, for the sake of his status now as uh, the leader of uh, this uh, um, political Economic party. Yes, you see, but anyway, the the uh, the stream that he followed at the high school level mm-hmm. wouldn't give him any other alternative except just to follow the politics. You know, the politics, they don't have the principle, you see. So, politics are politics. Mm-hmm. There's no principle there. And then, um, unlike myself who did the law. So, for him to say... Um, you would not even represent his chickens. That's how bad, yeah. you, are. That's how bad you are. That's how bad I him. am. I'm... I'm Actually, bad is understatement. Mm. <laughs> I couldn't what you say. You are horrible. Um, no, horrible. Horribly horrible. <laughs> <laughs> I'm horribly horrible. <coughs> Sorry. You see? Yeah. yeah. So, uh, he has made uh, 399 degrees Celsius turnabout. Mm-hmm. From that time, after my arrest... Picking me, supporting me, mm-hmm. and now I'm this horrible person. So you will ask yourself, why previously did he believe that Tefu can do the right thing? Mm-hmm. What things change? What change when? Because I'm not talking, I'm not counting. Like, all right, the thing happened when? 28th of April. Now we are in July. Yeah. See, so hardly, hardly three months full. Hardly. Mm-hmm. I'm this. Horribly, horrible person mm. who cannot even uh, represent uh, his chicken feet when they are stolen. You cannot even desire me to come there, you see. So, <laughs> <laughs> so the, thing, the thing of the law, uh, it's, uh, the law has got its own dynamics. You yeah. See? yeah. Uh, can, I, can, I, can, I, can, I, can I interject by saying that let's apply our minds to the scenario. Is it not possible that he could have found you being arrested in court disgusting? Like we all were. We, were, we all were mm-hmm. disgusted that you were arrested in court. We saw it as harassment. Mm-hmm. We saw it as silencing. Mm-hmm. But at the same time, 
weeks unfolded so that then he could see your conduct in court and now he's commenting on the conduct. It's yeah. not that he was on your side when you were arrested and harassed in court. He was sympathizing with it because we all saw it as deplorable. It yeah. should not have happened. Yeah. Like you were saying, Guinness mm. Book of Records doesn't happen anywhere else in the world. Mm -hmm. But then we allow matters to unfold in court, we observe you in court, yeah. and we, we form our opinions based on that. Because mm -hmm. it substantiates. Mm. Uh, you said something, it's, it's a fucking stupid case, whatever you said in court, like you said an F word, uh, yeah. it's a fucked up situation, whatever you said in court. Yeah. So it, those two things can, can exist at the same time, that he sympathized with you mm -hmm. um, when you were being harassed, and we all yeah. saw that. And as weeks went on, you gave us evidence to change our minds about you. Mm. I'm posing that as a, as a scenario. Mm -hmm. can, can one person not hold those two views at the same time? Because you said yourself that a wise man knows how to change their mind. Mm. And I think that quote extends to some people say on the basis or in front of new evidence a wise man changes their mind. Yeah. Yes. No, I hear you. Um, but let me tell you, there is no guarantee for... Or there is nothing that warrant or justify his uh, uh, turning point or turning of events mm -hmm. to for him to can say today I don't even deserve the title of advocate mm -hmm. because of uh, my conduct. I've been saying um, in my previous. Spaces where I've been in terms in of the interviews. Yeah. Yes, yes. You say, say, okay. Firstly, let me say this. My philosophy of life is that you cannot break me if you didn't make me. See? Because you don't know the kind of the material I'm made up with. You see, I'm made up with a thinner material. I'm not easy broken. I've got a thick skin. That's how I define myself. See, uh, in court of law, a law or being a lawyer is not a, I mean, court is not a place for the faint-hearted people. It's not an easy place to be there. And it's not easy when you are desiring a certain relief for your client. Mm -hmm. You have to convince the, the judge. And it's not easy. It will take you a lot of time, preparation, the research, and all those things, you see. So, from the outside, from the person on the gallery there, yeah. uh, everything is easy. And this matter, uh, remember, uh, like this matter is one of those matters that uh, uh, <coughs> it's, uh, it's got uh, both national and international interest, public interest, yeah. you see. They've been waiting for this. Many people, they've uh, been asking themselves about this scenario, you see. But now, back to Julius, I mean, I've been saying, if there's anyone who can come and challenge me, you see, this conduct, and be specific, this conduct is wrong. Mm -hmm. You are unethical, the way you've been conducting yourself before the court. Um, I'll remember that. I don't even... Did you use the F word in court? I don't even uh, 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 remember uh, rem uh, remembering the F word until the judge, if you did see that uh, scenario. Yeah, after, I, was, I was watching a lot of the case. Yes. Uh, say, and it was in the morning when we started the case. Say, no, there has been some unsavory word that had been used and then um, uh, um, this word we should uh, be careful of how we apply we choose uh, we choose a word mm -hmm. in this court uh, by that time i was standing and the judge was talking to me but it's not like i was standing and he asked me to stand up so that he can tell me this it was my turn to make you some submission then the judge and then uh, bring that to my attention. You see, like I knew, I remember very well when I was, it was during the cross-examination. Yeah. Then I said, okay, um, 
Because the witness there was like, he want to be like uh, um, steadfast mm -hmm. to say, no, look, therefore you can say whatever you want to say. I'm not going to move on this point. Mm -hmm. You see? So that scenario was not tempered. You see? And then I said, all right. Um, but now you, uh, I said, I remember even my misdemeanor. All right. Uh, what is the relevant weight? Um, <laughs> that's when I talk about the F weight. <laughs> what did you say you exactly? See, I lacked. Eh? What did you say exactly? <laughs> you uh, say? This is uh, digital media. Okay. No one is going yes, to Yeah. Uh, uh, I mean. Um, it's YouTube. Yeah. No, exit. Yeah. That uh, like. Uh, the way, the intensity. What did you say exactly? Uh, F U C K E N. Fucking. <laughs> <laughs> you see, I mean, uh, when the person comes to, when a person comes to that uh, situation, it means that uh, this person intensely is saying that. Yeah. Chief, so you know just, the. Let me just fix your mic. Yeah. Okay. There you go. Okay. He said no, Mr. Witness. You really, even in the heart of your hearts, you know what you are saying. You just say you don't want to move, but you are protecting something here. Mm. You see? Hence, it led to that F weight, you see. So, when the judge was saying, oh, uh, let's uh, remember in law, né, they say, uh, we, the lawyers, mm -hmm. we are artists when it comes to the language. You see? So, that, yeah, that is the. Uh, Side of the uh, they say the law is uh, law is a science, science of mind, and the, as a lawyers, we are artists. We should make sure that we are good in crafting our own speech. Yeah, yeah, uh, make a certain with because uh, the, law, the the legal language is not common, and it's not for everybody. Yeah, absolutely. Yes, so. Yeah, that is that. All right. Um, just a passing parting so, shot on Malema because mm -hmm. I think we're spending too much time on that. Mm -hmm. Um. What's your official response to that? Like, um, were you repelled by it? Did it affect you? Were people calling you about his statements? Or is just you brush it off? Would you, you have a thick skin. You've been through this before. You don't care for his words. Yeah, no. Somebody did phone me. Where, where, where was I? One of the advocates. He said, hey, you are on attack here. Yeah. On attack, yeah. What's happening? Um, I said, no. Uh, Julius Malema is attacking you. No, for what now? Uh, for you to to have withdraw. I said, okay, no, it's fine. I'm busy here engaged on something. Then uh, I will I will check it later. Mm -hmm. Yes. And indeed, I think I looked it uh, after two days, I think so, when I get on the YouTube. Mm -hmm. Then I saw it. Then, okay. No, I was laughing. Oh, okay. I was laughing. It didn't even you know, have overly impact offended. on me. Yeah. yeah, so I... I just consider Julius Malema being, um, I mean, being uh, humorous. It, uh, to me, I consider it to be a sense of humor. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so I never took uh, anything like uh, to my heart. I just said to say, look, Julius is Julius. Julius has done a woodwork at school and he was not doing well. And then myself, when I realized that I was not doing well in maths, I changed the maths to the history. That's why I'm a lawyer today. And then Julius kept on a woodwork. That's why Julius is a politician today. Mm. You see? Yeah. So, but now, I know. Um, I'm not worried. Um, from my home, eh? background, mm. we are the PEC people. We are the PAC people. We you are, you are a pan-Africanist? I'm pan-Africanist. Okay. Nice yes. one. Yes. Welcome. So, <laughs> thank you. Welcome. You are in a home of another Pan Africanist. Sure. Africa. Is a little. Yeah, you Africa. See? Yeah. So, um, African, they know how to sympathize. They are not easily offended people. They are uh, survivors. So, hence, the issue of Malema, it was one of those moments. And again, I said, Anyway, I don't blame Malema that much because he was asked the question by the journalist. Yeah. You see, this journalist, that was a presser for EFF. EFF specifically. Yeah. Yes. 
and for Malema to address whatever issues that he wanted to address. Mm -hmm. And he did address all these issues which were relevant according to him, that were affecting him as a party or his party uh, for the growth or whatever reasons. You see, the issue, the case of Senzo Meiwa, or the case of Advocate Tefu representing these four guys mm -hmm. purporting to be the people who killed uh, our late hero, it's got nothing to do with the Malema's presser. So I wouldn't understand what was the relevancy of that question to say, no, uh, Mr. Malema, uh, what do you say about Advocate Tefu having withdrawn from the case of Senzo Meiwa? Mm -hmm. That's where Malema came that with that, that ranting. I call it a ranting. But it has no impact on me. So um, he knows very well that I'm not representing the people whose chickens are stolen. I take a very serious cases, you see. So <laughs> I, I'm, I'm a specialist in labor matter. Mm. The matter, uh, labor is not every um, lawyer. Let me say specifically African lawyers. Most of them they are in a criminal matter. See, me doing the criminal. I don't take a criminal as, a, as a something that I should specialize with. I was in the police for 19 years. I've, done, I've been in all the, uh, the unit. I was in the investigation office. I was detective. Mm -hmm. So I've done the... When I was studying my law, I, remember, I studied my law while I was uh, in the police and full time with the University of Johannesburg. Mm -hmm. Yes. So it was not easy. And in my law degree, I did a research. So the research is the best, is the best uh, 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 course or the best method that you can you can do because once you've got the research, things will be easy for you. Mm -hmm. Yes. So when you prepare your case and all those things, you see. So you can wake me up at any time of the night. Say, hey, Devo, there is a problem here. I need you to come and represent me in this criminal matter. I'll just only make sure that I wash my hands and my my face and everything. Then I. I rope, mm. I go, and we are going to succeed. All right. I normally um, say, I don't go to court to win the case. Because the court is not a soccer, bill, a soccer, soccer field. I go to court to do my best to represent my client. Because at the court, what wins is not a person winning. It's a justice that's win. You see, I go there to represent my client to make sure that there is a justice. Yes. Whoever goes to court saying, I'm going to win, then that person is in the wrong career. That person rather change the career and go and join uh, Orlando Pirates or Chiefs. Then they can win there. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So in court, it's not a place where people win. Yeah. I'm, I'm interested in talking about your career. We'll, we'll do that. We have enough time to talk about that because I want to understand um, at what point do you um, transition from being the police system uh, to you being an advocate or a lawyer. But we'll get there. I think things of public interest now. Mm -hmm. uh, we've dealt with the first one of Julius Malema, your sure. response to that. The second one perhaps is about the case. I know it's still sub judy case, so it's still ongoing. You don't want to say anything that jeopardizes your your former clients' mm -hmm. chances in court. Yeah. But when did this case land on your lap? What happened? Where were you? Which year was it? Who called you? Um, because of course you didn't just appear in court to represent accused number one to four. Mm -hmm. Someone called you. When did you? Where, when were you initially acquainted with this case? Yeah. And in what capacity? Okay. Yes. 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 Um. Um. Firstly, I'm Orlando Paris fan. Up the bugs. <laughs> I'm Orlando Paris supporter. Mo Papa Sure. You see. So. Um, for the very first time, I think someone can say I've got the conflict of interest. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you see? Yes. Yeah. So I think there's some people somehow, they may be reading my misdemeanor, reading my face. Uh, to be honest, let me concede. Um, and at one stage, I did say this. The day, you remember the day when I mentioned that uh, will be having an eyewitness saying one, two, three. Yes, about Kelly. Yeah. And then if you can go back and see that day before, I even said, when I was about to come to that, I said, I'm becoming emotional. I said that in court. I'm on record, you see. Because I don't want to 
think about the day when this become a breaking news to me that Senzo is on. Yeah. After I've seen his acrobatic performance, like the best performance ever. You remember that day when they, uh, they were playing uh, uh, Ajax? It was raining. Yeah, yeah, it was raining and they lost the game, actually. I think it was a cup match uh, yeah. that weekend that he passed on. Um, it must have been, because I'm a football journalist and um, mm. they lost the game. I think it was a knockout competition. It was raining, you are correct. Yeah. Um, but he was so acrobatic. Yes, yes. You see? And it was also Bafana. Bafana was number one. Yes. Um, I'm, I'm getting emotional. Um, um, let, can you please continue? We'll go back, man. Did the Pirates lose that game? No. I think so. I, I'm a journalist and I'm I'm very good at knowing matches and events. Yes. Um, no, we'll do our homework after. I think he, they, they lost the game. Um, okay. Yeah, I remember because I was working... Despite his performance. Yes, but all... I, I want to emphasize this, that around the time, 2013, 2014, mm. he he's taking over Itumelen Kune with Bafana Bafana, which was something that we never thought he would do because Itumelen Kune was a beast Mm. And Usenzo Meiwa was always going to be number two. Mm. Um, mm. And then I think Sheikh Mashaba takes over around the time. Bafana Bafana. Mm. And the, we played the qualifiers. Mm. And he is insane. Like he's super insane in terms of saving us as Bafana Bafana. Um, he didn't play the 2015 African Cup of Nations, which he helped us to qualify for because he passed away mm. in 2014. But he was a beast. I think they may have given him the unbanded national team. I can't remember, but even in those qualifiers, mm. um, he, he, geez, man, like it's the worst possible time to die at the moment where yeah, you are day. building up a career yeah. and you won that number one jersey. He was on the prime of his life. Yeah. 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 All right. Um, one of the day before the arrest of the five suspects. So this is this is way past 2014. We are further away from 2014, right? I'm just trying to get the date, the timelines. Yeah, I'm talking about 2020. Okay, it's 2020. Okay, yes. thank you. Yes. Uh, I received the call. Uh, somebody, actually. Okay, let me start here. Somebody that I cannot mention by the name because the case of Judy Care yeah. approached me very close to uh, Sfiso, very close to the family. Say, look, man, uh, I know you. I know the good job that you are doing in representing the police. You win the cases. You know, out of 20 cases of the police, I win 19. You see? And the one, I don't lose it. It's just a matter of, you know, in labor, you deal with the substance and the procedure. The one, the last one that I don't uh, succeed in it mm. is either the person really has done something wrong and I can't do anything about that. Yeah. But always the procedure that will follow will always be wrong. You see, the person may be fired at work, but they will say, no, but for your procedure, pay this person for four months. You can go with the four months salary. You see, yeah. But the rest, I make a clean sweep against the subs. Mm -hmm. So that's why I'm a problem to them, you see, because I bring all these guys back. I brought the uh, other guy after doing three years back at work, mm. you see, yeah. So let's go back to, uh, to other things, because that person knew me from that point. Sure. Yeah. And they see, know your, your empirical yeah. record. Exactly. Yeah. Yes. So I've spoken to his face. I said, no, look, um, we see the issues of uh, the hairy nails of this world and all those things. You see, um, we have approached this person when they tell us Yes, they have approached me. I spoke to them. I said, "No, guys, look what. I'm a Paris fan. I'm glad. I won't have a problem to assist because I needed justice." At this point, Sviso is losing faith with Afri Forum. That's why he's coming to you. Fiso has lost faith with the Fafri Forum. Yeah. Actually, it was after the arrest. Mm -hmm. Yes. Because Fiso, at some point, after the arrest, he's like, these are not the right people. It was after arrest. Okay. Yes. When he came. So, then Fiso, be, for the audience, Fiso be, is Senzo Meiwa's brother. His brother, yes. Yeah. So, let's say for the 
lack of knowing the specification or remembering the specification, let's just say at the beginning of November 2020, mm -hmm. because the arrest was uh, on the 20, the guys appeared for the uh, first time on the 27th of uh, October 2020. So I was met with in November, January, I mean November 2020. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So then it's all right. Uh, I said, no, it's fine. Tell Sifiso, give me a call. Indeed, he called me. And then, by the way, Sifiso is working in the police, but under, not as a police, but under the Public Service Act. Mm -hmm. Yes. That's but, his employment, like that's his occupation. That's his occupation. Even before his brother died. Yes. Okay. Yes. It's a, it's a Pingo police station mm -hmm. in Durban. So he did call me. And then. Uh, I said, no, call is not enough. We make an, uh, an appointment that we sh will meet in person. Um, I went to Devon. I met him somewhere in Devon. We had a talk. Then I had my condition, he accept. And realizing that um, since I was a breadwinner at home, and uh, it's a very hard rendering situation after he passed on. Then I agree, I said, no, brother, I will do my best that I can do. I will support you. Yes. That's how I accept it. And uh, there is no, I said, no, I will take this pro bono issue. Mm -hmm. I mean, I mean, uh, so you're gonna watch, help them for watching free. Brief, watching brief pro bono, yeah, oh, free. Okay, yeah, because this yes. is where I wanna for the benefit of the people that are watching. We mm -hmm. don't know what, what. So, if you are interacting with Sviso, yeah, you are engaging him yes. as the brother of the victim or the victim's family, but at some point you then become the legal representative of the people who are accused mm -hmm. against the victim. So we need to make that clear as well, yeah, because we people might be confused that. Ungena Wupus Fiso, Gota Labandu Laba representayo are the ones accused of killing Usenzo. Yeah, right. Yeah, that uh, is uh, one of the mysteries that is need to be entangled. Yeah. Yes. Uh, so some people are talking about, you no, know, people are called at the uh, TV channels and all those, they are called uh, the legal expert. Mm. I don't know up to now uh, like how, to expect, how to explain a legal expert. Everyone just go, yes, he agrees, he's a legal expert. <laughs> <laughs> now, one day you will yeah. have a career, you will be an analyst on TV. No, you see what? Because you, you, you say you are uh, an expert in labor matters. So now, one day. I'm knowledgeable. I, I, no, I, actually, I'm aspiring. I'm aspir aspiring uh, Noah in a, in, 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 a, in a labor law, you see. Mm, particularly yeah, in labor yeah, law. Yes. So you have a conversation with so, Sviso? You uh, agree to help them You cannot bone. call. Okay, before you, go, you cannot call sure. something, uh, somebody like uh, Zola Macha would say he's a legal expert. Uh, I'm sorry. Amara uh, Uzola, sorry, um, I may, I think he's advocate now. We know mm. him from football team. Still a team. Tina Siamazi with football. He's the, I think he's the attorney of the Premier Soccer League. Yeah, he's a prosecutor now. Okay. Yeah. I so then you cannot uh, say. Uh, analyze the conduct of advocate therefore he will say all these negative things about whatever but i don't have a problem with that anyway okay so now um we are great and then with Fiso, and then i started when i started and then Fiso write a letter he wrote a letter uh to the stakeholders and being a watching brief now it means that i'm carrying the mandate from the mayor family insofar as this case was concerned you see, so um, by that time, I was not aware of the two dockets. Mm -hmm. You see, I was only knowing that the docket is 636. Yes. So, and uh, then the mandate, it will be that when the case goes to court, I'll go there on behalf of the Osifiso. Mm-hmm. And then, if there's any other thing that uh, the family want to assist the prosecution, 
I'll be the person instructed to meet the prosecution to say, no, we can help you. Yeah, this is a situation. Or uh, we've got uh, there is a other person who can be, is an eyewitness or is a, yeah, you want to give an affidavit. Yes. Even myself, I can obtain the affidavit of that person mm -hmm. and give the people at, uh, by that time, since I came in here, the prosecutor has been the same guy, Advocate Baloy. You see? So, I'm all acting advisor of CISO. See? The reason I, I say, CISO is a brother, elder brother of uh, the deceased. Mm -hmm. And then, even initially, by that time, Afro Forum, after he, he wrote a letter to the prosecution, uh, to the NDPP, National Prosecutor, mm -hmm. National the Director, Director of, of Prosecution, yeah, Jamila Badoy, then informing that uh, uh, we've got Advocate Tefu as our, our watching brief. He also informed the people in the police. Yeah. We got a positive response from the uh, prosecution. The letter... Uh, the responding letter by Deputy National uh, Prosecutor, um, Advocate uh, Dikok. He said, no, no, it's fine. We welcome Advocate Defo. We are hopeful that he will assist. He will uh, work with us and assist where can assist. Mm -hmm. Yes. But as from the police, they never responded. But it's like, we don't need their response anyway. Mm -hmm. You yeah. don't need their consent in order to... We don't to need them. their consent. Yeah. You see, yeah. And then... That's where we started. Then I started to do the groundwork uh, with my background of investigation. And then we, uh, I started to want to know who are in this. That's when I understand that. At that point now, the people have been arrested. That's now I became aware of there are two dockets here. These five people have been prosecuted on 636. And there is a 375. Mm -hmm. Yes. And they've got... Uh, Different investigating officers. Yeah. 636 is called the leading investigating officer who happened to be a brigadier. Kininda. And then 375, it's got uh, uh, Lieutenant Colonel Butelezi, Joyce Butelezi, and Warrant Officer Mishak Makubu. Uh, Joyce Butelezi is from the Forensic Division. And then Makubu is from the Hawks. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So... Okay, can I so stop you there? So... The current matter that's under um, that's on trial now, mm. we know what is what is alleged to have been done by the accused. Mm. We know who are the accused. We know that you and Advocate Baloy and Advocate Sholola were involved in that um, under the leadership of Judge Shifua Maumel, right? That's what the public knows. No, we are not under the leadership of. Judge Sorry, Maumel. whatever whatever He's my word is, is a, yes, is presiding over yeah. that, that 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 case. Yeah. Yeah. Sorry about my wording. No problem. Tell us about the other docket. What's happening? That's not um, under trial at the moment. Um, perhaps we can speak about it. What did you uncover on the second docket? Yeah, actually, I was about to finish to say, for the purpose of our uh, for the purpose of our um, interview and sure. the benefit of the viewers yes. to say, uh, we have is very important to categorize this uh, docket. As I say, the current docket. Uh, we used to say in the investigation, in the docket, in the case, when the case is investigated, the police, they have to form the theory along the line of that docket. Even the prosecution, they have to form their theory in terms of the method. How are we going to approach uh, the court in terms of this docket? Mm -hmm. Yes, our lineup of the witnesses. So now, the theory of uh, docket 636 of Keninda, it was that... Um, People entered that house. And then one of them had a firearm and killed Senzo, according to the eyewitnesses in that house. Mm. You see? So they were taking it along those lines. Which is the case that's currently on trial. Current, current on trial, yes. And the other docket, it was saying, no, that story of the people entering that house and killed Senzo is nonsensical. That is nonsense. You see? No one entered in this house. Uh, theory of uh, 375 under the leadership of uh, uh, investigating officer uh, Makubo and uh, Buteleze is that if there's a killer, if someone was killed or shot by someone, the shooter is in the house. The murder weapon 
is in the house. So these people in this house, they know what happened to Senzo. Because Chico has been saying, yes and yes, that no, my son, no. Kelly, no. It cannot be. Senzo's friend, no. It cannot be that the thing, uh, someone has killed in front of the people, uh, the girlfriend, the friends, and then people they don't know. No, they know uh, that was in interview. Yes, it's, it's on record. Yes. Saying that, you see? And uh, somewhere he was pushed to the, because you know, you media people, you need a sen uh, sensation. Uh, he was pushed by Cody to say, yeah, uh, we hear that uh, the guy advocate therefore uh, spoken to you. He said, yeah, no, he's spoken to me. What did he say? No, he said something that it doesn't make sense to me. He said, oh, what is that? You didn't have a conversation with Chico Twala? Chico? Yeah. No, I, I spoke to Chico. It was on the 26th of November last year. You see? Uh, last year, yeah. It was Friday. You can go and check the calendar. That's why I have done history. You see? <laughs> <laughs> it's for this purpose. <laughs> so, what was that no, we spoke. Mm -hmm. I, I, I was introducing myself to him that I'm watching Brief. So, um, because by that time, um, I didn't know that Chico is a witness of the state. You see? Because I saw late that Chico is a witness of the state on 636. Mm -hmm. But anyway, there was nothing that stopped to, uh, me to talk to him. But even now, I saw because I've got the documents. But when I speak to uh, Chico, Chico was never approached by the state to be a witness. You see? So we spoke uh, fluently. I know Chico back 2001. You see, um, I will tell you why I know Chigo back 2001 in person. I was working in Santan Police Station by that time. You see, yeah. Uh, then I spoke to him. I introduced myself. I said, no. Um, I reminded him of 2001. I'm this person. Remember this person? Oh, okay. So now why are you saying now you are an advocate? Because I know you as a police. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because I've arrested him in 2001. <laughs> you see. <laughs> so, uh, under what I, circumstances? Eh? <laughs> under what circumstances? No, we'll come there. <laughs> <laughs> no, me, I was arrested. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, and I I arrest for purpose. Yeah. Yeah. So I, the, the, let's let's entertain the second so, docket that's not on trial. You were just going there. You were telling yeah, us the yeah. contents that is contained in the docket. Yeah. That it's theorizing that. Um, whoever murdered the deceased mm. is someone from within the house exactly. and everyone in that house is implicated mm. but in, in so far as them knowing what happened because by virtue of them being inside that house. Yes. Because there are also the statements. Um, so if, yeah, because they, they would have said, and I think this is on, on record, they said that there were intruders. All of them were singing the same song that there were intruders. If the second docket is then um, saying something to the contrary, mm. are they not then defeating the ends of justice by giving false statements then? Would there were intruders coming into the house? Because I think all of them are saying the same thing. Yeah, I think you are, you are a private investigator, Nguleleko, because you are right. <laughs> you are spot on. <laughs> because I, I think, yeah, I, this makes sense to everyone. If, as you are saying, you have correctly said it. In the second docket, Along the charges, there are a lot of uh, defeating the end of charges, uh, defeating the end of justice there because some, book, some people were hiding. Uh, in that docket, the witnesses are 14. Yeah, if I remember. But not more than 14. In the second docket, 14 witnesses. And then even those people in that house, they give their own affidavits. Mm -hmm. Yes. And then the other people... Um, it's on record further to say that uh, on the fateful day, after less than five minutes or five minutes since uh, the shooting, yes, somebody in the house called, phone to phone someone in Deben. They know she, she, uh, Sandra was shot by mistake. Yeah, yeah. That's so what the brother to... says as well. The brother confirms and he says it in words. Yeah, which, yeah. which means shot by mistake. So yeah, but he asked uh, whoever was the caller. He was asked the question how the caller couldn't uh, specify how 
It was just say, yeah, no, you are short, yeah. Yeah, I can see him, you are short. Mm. You see? Yes. So from there, there were a lot of theories. There were a lot of theories. And then the first theory that can be trusted and be believed, it will be in this 375 because uh, the, the caller from, I mean, in the house uh, to Devon, uh, say no, he was sold by mistake. Now, when you say one plus one, it doesn't often give you 11. You <laughs> see, it will give two. <laughs> And then uh, uh, there is this new maxim from certain persons say, connecting the dots, mm. you see? So now, if you say the intruders came inside the house and then they want money, and then ultimately when they left, one of us um, is lifeless because of I am. Can really a person who can enter the house with the intention to rob you guys, when he has shot someone amongst you, say that person was shot by mistake? Mm. Can the robber shot by mistake? The robber can shoot only when he feels like he's, uh, when he feels like he's intimidated by you people inside him. Yeah. Yes. Maybe that is a mistake when the robber can shoot. When he feel like, uh, because we've got the kind of the robbers. There are those who are amateurish. They are learning. We've got the professional robbers. They cannot just shoot. They just talk. Say, "Abantu uh, bagan kulun kulu, zizalapa, sfuna imali, sfuna mawa shuenu, samona na angu senzo samazi, mukando ne imali, senzo sfuna imali, and then nenga nyagazi, yaga yonge pansi, then si tate se hambe, the zosala the seven zala izinye, oba." Yeah. Then they go. Those are professional. So those people, even today, I don't believe that, I don't know if anyone knows whether those people were that kind of uh, classified people. But now what's surprising is that, uh, I think you are aware, somebody later was arrested. And the person who was arrested was identified by two people in that house. As one, uh, the person who entered the house. And what is surprising the people is that that person who was arrested, he has been known by that family for seven years. Yes. You see? I think he used to wash the car. We used to wash the car with yeah. the disease and the, the lady there. Yes. Yes. And then was a point was pointed out by the people who knew this. You see, you can see there was an intention to defeat the end of justice here. Mm. You see? Yeah. So um, that is a theory of that to, to say, no, look, there is no, there is seven five. He says, no one entered this house. Lena, you people in this house, you know what happened to our soccer hero. Yeah. Yes. So now, ultimately, um, there was a time when the family was informed that there was an imminent arrest of the people in the house under 375. Senzo's family is, is being informed yes. that the people who were in the house exactly. were about to be arrested. Yes. Okay. Yes. And there was even the meeting. Uh, with the cousin who came here and met the DPP and explained further. Because all along, even before Obaba Semewa passed on, mm. may his uh, soul rest in peace, uh, the family had been always saying, whatever has happened to Robert Mewa, that people in the house, they should have tell. They should explain to us what happened. You see? So, the eyes of the family have been always looking in that house. Mm. They never looked anywhere. They never even have an appetite to can listen about the, the imaginary Accused. two people yeah. who came there and shoot. Yeah. And they go. You see? Yeah. Yes. So what, what, what in your experience is the reason why? Because Senzo has his people in that room. He has uh, two of his friends mm. um, in that room um, as he's killed. What, in your experience, do you think they stand to gain by not speaking the truth? Um, <coughs> sorry, I'm yeah. not asking you now to make a legal um, calculation. Yeah. Um, you are an experienced um, um, what is law enforcer. Uh, you are an experienced law enforcer. Why uh -huh. would your best friends not speak on your behalf? 
I'm not law enforcer. I'm a lawyer. I'm taking people out. <laughs> <laughs> I used to take the people in. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's yeah. how I explain myself. How do you find myself? Now I'm take a, I'm taking them. You're out. taking them out, yeah. Yes. Yeah. So yeah, why so, why, okay. why would Senzo's best friends not yeah, uh, I think, speak the truth? I think there you are challenging my background, isn't it? As a law, uh, as a pre, in my previous life. Yes, yes, yes. Yes. Yeah. For which uh, I don't have amnesia. I can tell for that. Um, <laughs> <laughs> sometimes they talk about you know. Um, there's a lot of issues that been said, and uh, there are a lot of issues about the witchcraft. Unfortunately, I don't know whether, but I don't know this. It might have been kept a big secret. If there's anyone who's a witch at my house, at my home, background, even in my gogo, I knew myself and my home, the relative, paternal and maternal, that I don't know any one of them who uh, was once in this uh, field of uh, witchcraft, you see. But when the people are talking about the issues of witchcraft, to me they talk about the foreign language. You see, yes. But I hear that as something, but not experience per se. Mm. Um, so you're entertaining in that your as language. a possibility. In your, uh, yeah, in, in Zulu you can say, well, no. Oh, okay. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> we are going so, into the realm of the supernatural. <laughs> we cannot uh, logically explain things when we go there. Yeah, that's why we need to limit ourselves to theories that we can at least follow the logic. The conspiracy why, theories. Yes. Why? Yeah. Why would the best friends not come forward? Yeah, because um, there's been said immediately after the incident, one of the best friend was there, supposed to be there just for that weekend and go home, but the person has to extend the whole weekend, the whole week. So they said the whole week, the reason for that person to be there the whole week was that uh, they have to see the visionary. You know the visionary I'm talking about. Yes. Yeah. And then those people, they have to be... Um, Wasn't there a cleansing ceremony as well? A cleansing yeah, ceremony. Yeah, also the cleansing. And then the others is to say... Uh, mm, no coloma. Hmm. <laughs> don't other people will be made their mind to be um uh hypnotized <laughs> so that they cannot go and explain to other people what happened there <laughs> you see so those people uh that's why uh sangoma it was the time of sangoma now to make sure that some people become hypnotized hmm. They see only the vision. They can only explain uh, what cannot be comprehended mm -hmm. by the ordinary human mind. Mm -hmm. You see, it cannot be, uh, uh, my brother, that I came here with this. I came here yeah, for this up. person. Out here. Yeah. And so this person, when he's at home, I say, hey, baga baga kon. I go and see him. I'm... I am because he is, mm -hmm. you see. But when something like this happened, you've changed completely, turn around. Mm -hmm. You're no longer even going to the family there. You're no longer going there. You don't want to even see. When I see that I'm going to meet Sifiso there, I change the direction. It's what is happening now. Mm -hmm. This guy cannot meet Sifiso. If by chance Sifiso will come across him, Say hey, Bafo. Yeah, Bafo, go right. Like, it's like he's in a rush to go somewhere. A rush for nowhere. <laughs> Self-created rush. Yeah. You see? And of avoidance. But this person has completely changed. Like he cannot even have a minute with the Sfiso. Always he said you will uh, formulate that rush that is non existent. You see? Then you can see. Really, uh, African people, uh, I respect them. Mm. They know their things. Is there, even though uh, for my... As experienced I, as you I are, believe, as experienced as you are, mm -hmm. you, you, you think that that is possible. Even to you and myself and all of us being in this room that someone can hypnotize us 
to a point where we cannot give evidence of what happened. With African magic, mm -hmm. it has happened. But me, I'm um, African magic proof. It cannot happen to me. Mm -hmm. Yeah, they are trying and they are still trying even today. They cannot succeed. <laughs> <laughs> what is your bulletproof? Maybe it's a product that we My can My bulletproof is a prayer. Okay. Yeah. Okay. My Lord's prayer. I, I hear you. Mm. Um, we've entertained the second docket. Why do you think that was not pursued by the state? That why, why is it that we have your former clients at choose number one to four, plus advocate Mshololo's client at choose number five? Why are those people being, why are they on trial as opposed to the second docket? Why, in your opinion, is that Okay. Happening? Yeah, there is this thing I often say it, even to the state, and they don't often like it, but I always maintain it. Look, let's go to Abu Khirinel now, who are confusing people, who are dividing that family. Mm. Let me let me break it down to the audience as well, just before you go in. So um, Khirinel is an is a very experienced legal practitioner is part of um, AfriForum. The family went uh, to get assistance or to solicit assistance from AfriForum after seeing that they were not being assisted by the state. The case was not going anywhere. Uh, there are two or three cousins from the Meiwa family who are still with Ucherinel, whereas Sifiso Meiwa um, has distanced himself from AfriForum and his reason is that he doesn't believe that accused number one to five, the so-called intruders, are the people that killed Usenzo Meiwa. You can continue, sir. Sure. Um, yeah, you say Herinel is experience. Yeah, you're saying that at your own risk. Because uh, Oscar Pistorius against Advocate Pereiro. We've seen him in high profile cases before. Yes. Yeah. I agree with you. You've seen him. And then there was also Herinel was working in that case with another uh, advocate Johnson who is now the head of the ID. Okay. Yeah, that lady was uh, the back, ro uh, the back, back room operator. Oscar Pistorius was convicted because of Advocate Johnson. Oh, okay. Yeah. Yeah, but the public only knows that yes. Herinel was... They just see, uh, Herinel was just a face there. Yeah. Yeah, because he was talking like me. Well, it's your, it's, it's your industry. You would know these yeah. things more than us. Yeah, like myself. Now, I'm with um, Timothy, my attorney. He's well experienced. It's me now who's talking. Then people look at me. And that guy is better than me, uh, Timothy. You see? <laughs> yes. He's the one who, without him, I couldn't be where I am. I couldn't be doing what I'm doing. Sure. Yes. Yes. Um, I was saying. Why is the state pursuing uh, these five? Yes, yes, exactly. Uh, remember, there is this thing. The reason that Gerinelli uh, is there is because after he was approached by Sifiso, Afri Forum was approached by Sifiso yes, for the yeah for uh, private prosecution mm. because the state and the prosecution, the police and the prosecution, they didn't want to go and arrest the people in that house, you see. So now they approached uh, before arrest before the 26th of November, I mean of October 2020. Yeah, Sifiso have approached those people like as far as I think as early as. June, June or May, June, twenty twenty, to assist. Yes. So, the Afro Forum agreed that they will assist with the private prosecution. So, private prosecution for it to succeed, the prosecution must uh, decline to prosecute, and then once they decline to prosecute. We call it a, a, a nulla prosecute. They will then issue the certificate of non prosecution. Mm -hmm. Yeah. To the complainant, whoever complaining. So, and then they will give the reason. Sometimes the prosecution, they just decline without giving the reason. Or they will know uh, no sufficient evidence. Yeah. Yes. You see. So now, it was clear that uh, from the onset, the prosecution they've seen. They were even agreeing that, no, indeed, these people in the house, they must be arrested. You see? But why they were not acting all along, even during the time of Ubaba Semi were uh, still alive, they didn't do what, what uh, the family has been always pushing. You see? So, 
the old man has been killed by the police and the prosecution because they didn't want to listen to him. You see, until he was hit by the stroke and died. There's nobody was like, they were looking at him like a joke. When he said, why don't you arrest those people in that house? Yeah. Yes. But they said, no. You know, the power belongs to, uh, to the prosecution, to the police, to arrest. Yes. If they cannot be arrested, there won't be any uh, prosecution. Now, then, what happened is that, uh, fast forward. So, uh, whatever the reason, we don't know. Only them, they can explain. Abu Chauke, Abu DPP. Uh, ultimately, you don't have a theory to avoid as to why. No, no, to avoid. This is uh, this is my belief, and in my in my investigation, and I even did sit at one stage with Karina. I, I told him straight, look, in myself, what I see that these people in the prosecution, they want to frustrate you, because I know, should the uh, non-prosecution certificate been issued to the Mayor family uh, to to Sfiso, he was, as he was, his, it was his intention to, uh, uh, to go kill. for the private prosecution. Yeah, with, with, with uh, Afro Forum. They, yes. They were going to go to the people that the family need them to be arrested. Mm. Yes. And they were going to succeed, I can tell you. Now, the state realized that. So, look, should we issue this? We'll be shooting ourselves on the foot. You see, Afro Forum is going to embarrass us. They are going to do the right thing. And uh, Afro Forum will have a big and huge support. The pro uh, private prosecution will be the in thing now in South Africa. Nobody. People will be pushing for the non nora prosecution certificate. Yes. From the side of the NPA. So that they can go to private, private prosecution, prosecution of uh, Afro Forum. You see? That was going to be an embarrassment to the government. So now, the prosecution and the police... They say, no, you know what? We don't want to be frustrated. We don't want to be embarrassed by the, this white uh, African organization, Afri Forum, and the uh, Harinel and Company. Yeah, it would, have, it would have made them look bad. Yeah, very bad. It would have been bad. Bad, actually, is understatement, my brother. Yeah. I must tell you. So now, what they did to choose to be frustrated and embarrassed by the Afri Forum, they say, as a state, guys, let's embarrass ourselves. Let's go and find the people that we can arrest to avoid issuing the NOLA prosecution certificate. Mm. And they, indeed, this is embarrassment. Arrestment of these five. Mm. Arrest of these five. That's how the state choose to embarrass themselves. The self-embarrassment is not so bad like they're embarrassing by the other person. Yeah. yeah, you see? So that's how, if you call it a theory or conspiracy, that is my conspiracy. Yeah. And it's what I also told this man, uh, I said, it's easy. You can see now, going forward, if the private prosecution will be something in here, the NPA, it will be easy to frustrate the private prosecution mm. because they cannot issue the NOLA certificate. They will just tell the police to go, hey, go and arrest him for the arrest him, bring here, we'll prosecute. Mm. Then we avoid these people. So once the arrest was done and the prosecution had been done, uh, automatically the mandate of the Afri Forum as per requested by Sifiso, has been terminated, naturally. They're no longer even the job. Mm. Yes. You cannot uh, prosecute privately while there is a arrest An ongoing and the prosecution. prosecution yeah. Yes. That's I where they come. And then that's where now I was now being activated. So to clarify to, for your, your viewers, uh, this uh, frustration of a hey, there's a Harinel. Now, we hear Tefu. Watch him brave. What is that? What is happening here? You see? Yeah. Now I put straight on the record. Is that Afri Forum was never a watching brief. And they cannot be a watching brief. They Why? were there Why for not? the purpose. Afri Forum is a private company, it's a private organization. Yeah. Uh, having established there a private prosecution arm um, or wing yes. of the organization. Exactly. You see? Actually, they, they are their own... Actually, they want to form their own government within the government of South Africa. You see? And they'll be powerful, those guys. They are powerful. They are now building the university. 
you see. So, um, that's the way you said. Watch him brief. You are a legal advisor. You are advising the family and everything. So they were there for the mandate of privately prosecuting those people in the house. Mm. Now, once the prosecution has been done of the wrong people, their mandate has been terminated. That's when I came in. Advocate, therefore, is you cannot compare me with the Harinel. I know you people, you love Harinel so much and you believe in him so much. <laughs> I don't know because he's a white man or what. I don't know. You see? Uh, he's been called in all the media. Yeah. Hey, Advocate Harinel. No. Harinel is an employee. Harinel is not a practicing advocate. That's the difference between the practicing advocate and the advocate who's got the titleless advocate but is an employee. Harinel is getting the salary month end mm. from Afrifora. He was initially getting salary from NPA. So now, um, Afri Forum, after the case of Oscar Pistorius, mm -hmm. he sold himself well, Harina, by the uh, uh, Oscar Pistorius case. You see, you heard me, what did I say? Ne? He was just a face. Someone was the backbone, someone else yeah. was the backbone. Yes, this lady, you see. So, but now they will always, you know, this is South Africa. Uh, you see the white, white, you'll see before anything, you see. Everything. White will be given the credit of everything. You see, white people. You see. So, he sold himself well. His brothers uh, from Africa Forum said, no, look, uh, we can establish this uh, private wing of prosecuting people. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And I can tell you, this private uh, prosecution of Africa Forum, it has been that established to prosecute white, black people. I can tell you. Why do you say that? I will explain to you, but we've already seen. You see, uh, even this uh, friend of mine, Malema is my friend, man, is now the victim of the Afri Forum private prosecution. <laughs> <laughs> I'll see. You know what? Yeah. Let Malema leave. Let me leave. I'll see that if not one day, when Afri Forum is attacking him, you won't call Tefu. Mm. You see, because it's only the who can deal with Africa. But he said he, so, he, he won't even call you for his chickens. Yeah, no, that I think. Yeah. You are saying it's a figure of speech. It's since it's humor. No, I just take it. Uh, I just dismiss it like that. He's been humor. Uh, he's been. Yeah. Yeah. That's can I can, can I talk. ask you about so, um, your relationship with the judge? Okay. Let what, me finish this one. Okay, but let me finish this at one. some point I want us, I want us to talk about the tension. Yeah, just keep it. The just, just keep it in mind. Sure. Yeah, I was about to clarify this issue that is confusing. Uh, I mean, confusing many people. So then, after the people were arrested, and then the prosecution, private prosecution mandate has been automatically terminated. Yes. Then that's where I was approached to can be a watching brief in this matter. And then uh, I become a watching brief in this matter. Mm -hmm. Then going forward, um, I've said already the mandate that I was given to go to court on behalf of the family. Yeah, you, you explained that. Anything and anything. You explained yeah, that. Yeah, yes, you see. Okay, by, that, by the way, when there was interjection, it was when I was explaining the defining uh, this, uh, the difference between the practicing advocate and the yes. advocate by the time of sal yeah. Yes. So, Kherinel has never been independent, like practicing advocate. He always has been advocate by title, being employed by NPA. Mm -hmm. He was doing the job there. So now he was given offer by the Afri Forum. Yeah. Afri Forum is a private uh, organization. Maybe, let's say, Kherinel was getting 60000 in the government, as a government employee. Now Afri Forum came, said, no, look, come to us, we established this thing, we know now you are good, with you, we can sell. Our private prosecution can be sell, because your name is being said on many mouths, you see. Then we are going to pay you. We are going to double your salary. We are going to give you 620,000, uh, yeah. Yeah, which you don't get from the government. And we're going to give you other packages that you don't get to them. Yeah, there will be bonuses uh, yeah. see, and whatever. Yeah, and it's true. That, uh, I mean, the government cannot compete with the 
organization like Afri Forum. Mm. Yes, you see. So then that's how you yeah, we, we, we get the, the distinction yes. between uh, now today. He is still employee, Harinel. You see, he doesn't want to get out of the, the, the comfort of the salary. He's always been a salaried. You see. So myself, I'm not getting salary. I was getting salary in the police chief. And I said, no, I cannot go on with this comfortability. Mm -hmm. Let me go out and create my own salary. You see, I'm enough of putting these people in. Now let me go and take them out. Take them out. <laughs> then they'll pay me. Yeah. You see? Yeah, I'll determine my salary now. I'm determining my salary now, where I am. But in this case, I don't get a salary. I represent them free of charge. Yeah. I'll tell you why. Let's say, um, yeah, I'll tell you why. So, hence I'm saying, don't compare me with Kherinel. Mm. Kherinel is getting a salary, he's working for salary. I'm working to create my own salary. I'm practicing advocacy. Actually, uh, law is what I sleep, is what I wake up, is what I eat, is what I eat. Everything is law that I'm doing. Kherinel can be sick. When I'm not well, I'm sick, I'm sleeping. The company is sleeping. I cannot get salary. You see, that's a disadvantage of that. Gerinello has got an advantage all over. He can book sick the whole month. Come month end, he get the salary. You see, we don't know. Maybe it's probable, it's probable that he's getting 300000 per month. You see. Why are you speculating yeah. about another man's salary? Huh? No, no, uh, I'm showing you how, how I, rich... I, I, I get it. I, yes. I completely got it from the moment you started talking about it, the distinction. Yes, I, I, I didn't know that there is that, but I, yeah. I so, get it now. So hence... Um, I'm the first person to coin, to come with this, uh, the so-called watching brief. Mm. It was me talking about watching brief. Because I can do watching brief as a practicing a lawyer. Mm. Yes. Wasn't, so now, uh, sorry, then after just, just on, on, on watching briefs, uh, just a quick one. Wasn't Kelly Kumalo's lawyers um, applying to do that as well? To, to be in yes. court to watch the proceedings. Isn't that the same thing? And why was that dismissed? Uh, I thought you won't take me there. I don't want to talk about that lady. She's talking to me. She's, t she's saying I'm a liar and all those things. You know. But I'll tell you that, that lady. That uh, lady, I think Malema has got the wrong people to attack. You see, that is the person that should be attacked because he's a circus. Monsam is a circus. Remember, you remember Monsam? Yes. I think she was a member of the EFF. Exactly. Long time ago at the beginning of treasurer. the EFF. Treasurer. A deputy or a deputy secretary or a treasurer. No, she was treasurer. Okay, I remember yes. I, I, I knew that I remember her from somewhere. Yes, yes. Yeah. Yes. You see. <laughs> yeah. So she's she didn't she apply to be part of the court proceedings? No, let me tell you a story. Actually she doesn't know where she is. She doesn't know the blue and the royal. You see. Royal colours. So I'm saying that. I am the watching brief. I'm creating my own salary. And then uh, Afri Forum cannot be able to be watching brief or Kherinel. Yeah. And I don't understand why people will talk about uh, like Kherinel as independent. Kherinel is not independent from Afri Forum. You see? You can yeah, I think the country understands that he is part of Afri Forum. Yeah. Uh, I don't want us to harp too much on him. I think yeah, sure. the picture is clear about what he's there for. Mm -hmm. And we also know what he was feel so disagrees now with uh, Afri Forum's point of view that those accused are the rightful people that are being on trial. That's we understand coming. that. That's we where it's coming there. That's yeah. where it's coming now. Today, Kherinel is still saying, these are the right people. Yeah, and, and Suiso Meiwa says no. The yes. person who approached Afri Forum for help is saying no, those are the wrong people. Yes. Yeah, I think the public already knows that now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We, we are fully aware of that. Mm -hmm. um, I was just asking on the watching brief for the Kelly, but you're saying you don't want to happen too much on that. Okay, no, I can just explain. Sure. The, why, was the her, her, why, why was it dismissed when she wanted someone to watch on her behalf, whereas you could do it for uh, Sfiso Meiwa? All right. No, look what Monsami is doing. Monsami, come to court. Uh, if you'll remember... It was me who was pushing for the state to put the charges on my client. You see, the state was like not ready, but I made sure that we pushed them to mm -hmm. put the charges. And they put the charges on the, it was, I think it was on the 22nd of April. 
after the postponement by this other lady on my side of the case number five. Okay. Yes. Advocate Mshalala. Yeah. So they put the the charges in there after. Then we were given the indictment now. And then by that time, this lady was there, and she was roping. She sit with us. You see, uh, uh, you talking uh, about Monsami or Monsami? Monsami. Okay. Yeah, I'm the one who's uh, who, uh, and she's the one who uh, because she like she think I'm a I, I, I'm a EFF person. Maybe I don't know. She saw my radicalism. I don't know. Yeah. Anyone yeah. anyone who's heard you speak in court would think that. You are also a member of the Reds because now we're radical. So, yeah, actually, the, the, uh, you are the, a firebrand. The, the 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 EFF has taken uh, after me. I didn't take care from EFF. It's because I'm older than EFF, <laughs> <laughs> and the leader of uh, EFF uh, is the is the. Is but the, you is did you did not have a public profile. Uh, I had. A public you did profile. not have a significant public profile that transcends the region that you were operating in. But uh, I don't want us to be derailed by that. Okay, fine. Yes. So we were here. And then Sammy then is, ro time, is robed yeah. and she's with you guys. She's with us there. Mm -hmm. You see? Then it was me who approached her. Yeah. Um, Magdalene, what's happening? No, I'm a watching brief for Kelly. Watching brief for Kelly. Yeah. Where is Kelly fitting here? No, what do you mean? No, look, uh, let, that's where now I went for the pushing of the charges to be read. Yes, they were put. Remember, she came before the charges were put. Mm -hmm. Yes. Then, Rebaloi put the charges. Then, because I've said to Musama, I said, look, Kid is not a suspect. The suspect, they're accused. I'm a client. So, why would you say you are a Kid is watching brief? Well, Kelly is the state witness. If Kelly needs a lawyer, the lawyer of Kelly is this man, Baloy, the state prosecutor. He's the Kelly's lawyer. Oh, so technically, if she's a state witness, she would have to liaise with Baloy. Exactly. Okay. Yeah. Not need extra person. So I mean, no, I mean that, I said to her, don't you think this is, will uh, raise the, uh, the public uh, eyebrows? Mm -hmm. She says, no. She like, she doesn't care, that woman. You see, you are at your own. You are on your own. But I try to advise you. Mm -hmm. Don't do that. You are even uh, making people to be suspicious of Kelly herself. Why would Kelly want to send someone to be there in court yeah. on her behalf? And she's not the accused. She's not accused. Yeah. Yes. You see? That was the first thing in my mind. As a layman, yeah. I was like, why? I try to advise her. Yeah. You see? And at one stage, as you say, you are the follower of this case. Mm. You might have heard somewhere where I stand up and I raise this point. I said, look, judge, I'm not comfortable about uh, the madam here. Yeah. Madam here, she says she's a washing brief of someone who would be the state witness. So, and then the charge were read, were put, and we've seen uh, the madam, the madam is a state witness. You see? Yeah. So this somehow... And then once you've got the indictment and you want to give this person who's becoming the watchproof of someone who can represent by the state as he's becoming the witness of the state. And then uh, the indictment to me and the document, the disclosure that I have will be a classified document. Because if you give to Mosan, after the court will go and sit down with Kelly, hey, you see this was statement. That's where now the witnesses cannot be safe. Yeah. You see? The witnesses' lives can be endangered. You understand? Yeah. She and will have access to something that she's not supposed to have access to. Exactly. Yeah. Now, you, you remember what judge said to me? Please uh, <laughs> remind us. Yeah. So, judge was not so uh, kind to me. He said, yeah. no. Uh, what is your problem? I said, no, I'm not comfortable. With her. Yeah, okay. Mm. Is, she, is she comfortable with you? <laughs> okay. Yeah. The judge has spoken. The court has spoken. Is that where the I tension started? I sit down. 
is that where the tension started. So I need to uh, I need to know, let you know what the public perception is, mm-hmm. right? As a member of the media, mm-hmm. as a practitioner on the digital media space, yeah. that the the perception out there is that there's tension between you and the judge. Mm-hmm. Um, the accusation on your part, mm-hmm. it's immaterial what we think about what's happening there because it doesn't affect you. We are not there. Exactly. Uh, we're not the jury. Mm-hmm. We not we don't have any impact in what is happening there. But I'm telling you what the public is saying. Mm. Um, in that there's existing tension, and that every time there is a moment for you to rise on a point, mm. you derail the court. If mm. they are having a conversation about, I think when when we came back after a month or two recess, the conversation was about the um, the Pretoria court whether jurisdiction, the jurisdiction, jurisdiction yeah. and 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 at, at the time that you were, had the opportunity to talk mm. you brought up the your your accused number 3 uh being um harassed, harassed in, in you know and in, in, in jail in jail yes mm. and you wanted to bring the letter as well mm. and this is one of the examples although that situation and the judge was saying it's a serious situation mm. that needs to be dealt with this is one of the examples that South Africa was taking through which every time there's an opportunity to talk about something else you bring mm. something else yeah. and perhaps that's where the tension started can you on your part admit that at times when you were given the microphone to speak mm. for an hour you, you you brought up things that were not being spoken about at the time. You you took your liberties, if I can put it that way. Yeah. Can do you have that self uh, assessment ability to say that there were times when I took liberties, and perhaps that's why the judge was irritated. Um, mm. let, let's talk about your relationship with the judge. What happened there? Yeah. Were you unfairly treated? Um, my client were unfairly treated. Because remember. If it looks like in the eyes of the lay person that I'm being confrontational or I've been ill-treated, yes, it's not me that is being ill-treated. Uh, in terms of our call, uh, when duty calls, as a lawyer, we are there to uh, pay the due diligence, represent your client to the best of your ability, mm-hmm. yeah, without begging anyone, without asking permission from anyone, without asking the approval from anyone, even the judge himself, if need be, seeing that, no, this place I've been stonewalled. You go back to your client, you say, guys, this is a situation. What is a mandate? Say, mandate, hey, let that man go. We call it a recusal application. You see? Yes. So, there has been that situation. Uh, But, like I said, I'm a guinea pig. I'm a thick-skinned. You see, uh, I'm 12 years in this field. Yes, I may not have that publicity, and uh, and I regret today, but not I regret in such way that I've got the this uh, new. I still now I feel like I've missed my privacy. You see, I'm this person who is not known. Like I was telling you. In my second year as a practicing advocate, I have a constitutional court judgment I've done alone. I didn't want a senior uh, counsel. Mm-hmm. I did it alone with my own research. You see, it's the, today it's a president in the court, in a labor court, you see, whereby it was uh, uh, considered by the big brains. If you can convince uh, Chief Justice Mokhoi Mokhoi, you convince... Uh, Deputy uh, Chief Justice. Yes. That one is my favorite. I read his book. <laughs> my only barita. Yeah. You see, I call him the school of law. That man is a, mo- uh, is a motivator to me. And I said, I convince him. And for your information, he's the, the one who, write, who wrote the judgment of majority. In my case, you see, that I did to bring back G.J. Baloi back to work after 10 years. Mm. The constitutional court say, go back to work. You go back to work straight. Only Judge Cameron and uh, Acting Justice uh, Mpatele, they only say, uh, if it was, it was according to us, we wouldn't say, no, uh, this matters won. Look, it's not about, normally when you do the review, uh, if you say you are, you are successful, the judge will say, okay, let the matter go and start again, de novo in the beginning cancer. Remember the matter that I was doing is in the beginning cancer of the health. Because the man who is working at the hospital is a superintendent in Mangwe. So they didn't say, 
matter must go back to beginning council to start afresh. Mm -hmm. They say Baloye must go back to work, go and report to work. Yeah. And Baloye was given all his money for the past 10 years. Everything mm. was given, paid back by me in my two years as a practicing advocate. So today, there will be the people who are standing on the rooftops and say, your conduct, where were they when I was uh, hustling alone, doing all, all, everything that I'm doing? Mm. And the black lawyers, I can tell you, they view the labor law as a very difficult. Criminal law is not difficult. Criminal law is not difficult. Like I said, you can wake me at any time of the night. Then I go and make a bail for someone or represent someone. Mm -hmm. I'll do that with right. a distinction. Yeah. You see? Why was the tension between you and the judge? Uh, the tension is uh, in the eyes of the lay person. So uh, that one is uh, uh, there was misunderstanding. And with that, I don't want to bash the judge here. You see? And I don't want to say ill of the judge here. What happened was happening in court. You see? Um, yes, here and there, there will be a situation where they say, no, 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 it's not procedural. What you are doing is not according to the procedure. I said, but I'm within my right to do this. And this is what is supporting me. So tell me what is not procedure. I mean, you can see now there was something very wrong there. Even my own person, Mushala and myself, we're supposed to be the comrade. Yeah, fighting. What I what I noticed what I noticed about that relationship is that you even stopped calling her advocate Mshololo to a point where you had to be the, the 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 judge said that even though she's a woman she's the judge she has the same rights as you sorry she's an advocate and you cannot discriminate her on the basis of being a woman she he even made that observation yeah I don't know where where is that coming from that I discriminate what is the discrimination I mean if uh, in, really, in, in, your, in your in your wording myself. in your wording yeah. you were able to easily say advocate baloi mm -hmm. but every single time it was your turn to say mshololo you were yeah. saying mshololo yeah. and you were not saying advocate and tina as the lay people we yeah. were perceiving what you, maybe there's tension there because the direction in which you are taking mm -hmm. representing the accused is different she wants to continue with cross examination where now you just want this thing to be dismissed because you, you believe what you, those are not the right people on trial yes Yes. Um, somebody was asking me that I was even calling the judge by the name in that, uh, that last interview. <laughs> you see, I said, no, chief. I was saying to judge, justice, and mention the same name. Mm. There's nothing wrong about that. When I say justice, my And then uh, most of the time, I'm saying you are lordship. You know, in this uh, sphere, ne, we do have a different uh, beliefs like faith, the Muslim lawyers, ne, they don't call the judge my lord. <laughs> yeah. They don't call the judge your lordship. Yeah. Because they believe that the they judge is a human lord. being. Yeah. Yes. You call it your honor. Yeah. You see? Or justice. My belief doesn't allow me to call a judge my lord. I'm not worshiping the judge. Mm. Judge is not my lord. The nearest Showing the respect. It's your, lord, your lordship. Not mine. Your lordship. You're there on your own. But I, 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 I recognize you. Mm. Yes. And the second to that, alternatively, just this moment. Mm -hmm. You see? That is a, a, there's nothing wrong about that. And then this one to say, okay, but no, uh, just a moment. Look, I don't understand why Michelle Allah would say one, two, three, four. He knows who's Mshololo. When I say Mshololo, you know that he's advocate Mshololo. To me to say Mshololo, I'm not disparaging her. I'm not taking her, her title away. I'm saying Mshololo, he's still my colleague. We are in the same defense. Uh, they say, hatred, see, more mistake. Even the where there's no mistake will be there. The critic will only listen to the language of advocative. I can tell you, even this thing of the F weight, if it was Dalimpo for saying that, <laughs> no one will remember. <laughs> if it was uh, Temega, yeah. no one will remember. And these people are my senior. Mm. And me, uh, I interact with them. Uh, on the day that I, 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 I withdrew, yeah. yes, you got I, a phone call. I attended. No, 
I attended. I was invited to the uh, book launch of uh, Advocate uh, Nguka. Tembe ka Nguka Itobi? Hmm? Tembe ka Nguka Itobi or? Doctor, Doctor Nguka. I call him Doctor. The former National Director of Public Prosecution. Oh, Bulelan yeah, Nguka. Bulelan Nguka. Doctor Bulelan Nguka. Yeah. Oh, is he Doctor now? No, that's me. Oh, the call him you. Doctor. Okay, what is yeah, he? Is he an advocate? He's an attorney. Okay. okay. Yeah. Bulelan Nguka. Yeah. That's me calling me a doctor because I've got my own reason. Okay. You see? Yeah. <laughs> I attended that book launch. Yeah. Yeah, that night. At the Verksman, uh, Verksman Attorneys, that building in Santin. Mm -hmm. Yes. So, I just arrived late anyway, but I've been there. When they finish everything, we go for the food out there, you see. I took a lot of photos with him. When they say, hey, hey Tefu, <laughs> you see? Yeah. They call me. Uh, you'll see there when we finish. Yeah. I was like, they sandwiched me. I said, no, this is our celebrity. We need a photo. <laughs> I took photos with them. Yeah. Yeah. Those people are my inspire. They inspire me. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You see. So, they didn't see me. They never even criticize me. They will never even criticize me. Mm -hmm. We sit down and say, hey, we say, hey. Uh, they say you withdrawn. I say I, I, I officially withdrawn. <laughs> <laughs> I terminated with the immediate effect. <laughs> it was nice. They were lucky. Yeah, yeah. And then uh, also, I spoke to uh, Dali. In 2015, there was a get together in uh, Midrand, mm -hmm. uh, Galaga Estate. Mm -hmm. uh, they call it uh, the gathering of uh, EFF leaders, uh, lawyers. I was one of them. And after, after we, we, we closed that, about 10 lawyers were appointed. This will be the EFF lawyers to help the EFF members. When they, they just put themselves, if they see the open place, they must just come and cook there. When the police come, <laughs> they arrest them. If it's happening in Pretoria, I'm in Pretoria. Yeah. I'm going there to represent them free of charge mm. for the bail. You see? So our uh, Dali was our chairperson. We meet every Tuesday at the EFF headquarters. You see, so uh, don't be uh, fooled by my name. <laughs> <laughs> you see, so even now I'm on the I'm, I'm You're still the part leader. of that. I'm the leader. Mm -hmm. I'm assisting. EFF has established the labor desk. I'm the one there assisting on the labor desk. Your so, uncle and a conspiracy. You were talking about <laughs> cults. All of these things are conspiracies. No, no. Look, I'm we, doing my job. We perceive people to be fighting, can't they? They're not fighting. I'm doing my job. My they are doing his job. Yeah, they yeah. are eating. Yeah, to make sure that this uh, campaign is going and EF is growing. Okay. You see, yeah. Uh, somebody say, oh, now they only need money now. We see they only now on the people with the president, the Vungola, the money. Now you are at ATM. Now you need the money. It's because you yeah. need money. You are at ATM. Yeah. Yeah. I think you saw me on that. The African transformation movement. Yeah. I'm a lawyer. I offer the service. Yeah. You someone want to believe in me. Yes. We see that. Terms and condition. Everything. Okay. Mm. So, yeah. Because uh, ATM, African transformation, transformation movement. movement. Yeah. Because it's that issue of a uh, Palapala pala issue. Okay. Yeah. So All because right. they know my background from the police. They say no. They ask is that this former and the current national commissioner must be investigated because they must be knowing the, what happened in, in Palapala. Pala Pala. And they covered it up. Yeah, so I went with them, there by IPIT, uh, for the purpose of all the, making the affidavit to be formal and all those things. Sure. Yes. All right. How I was. Let me ask you, um, I, I want to go to your life now, um, uh, where you come from and... I don't have your, life, man. Your, your career prior to this moment. Okay. Um, but your last words in your withdrawal, you hinted of a conspiracy that involves the president. You yeah. said a lot of things there. Just please enlighten us um, as to why you said the words that you said and what you be why you believe there is an involvement of the presidency as well there. Yeah, I said a lot of things. Actually, but I was stopped, eh? Yeah, obviously, you, know, you, were, you were never allowed to continue because the judge was so irritated at that yeah. point that, Actually, are you withdrawing? Okay, you are withdrawing, it's fine. Withdraw if yeah. you are withdrawing. Actually, the judge hated everything that coming from my mouth. <laughs> he was just, he didn't want to say, you, you don't talk. Throughout this, maybe let your attorney speak, other than you. Mm -hmm. Yes. That was what was, uh, uh, it, it was, 
short of what actually he was saying to say actually you are not supposed to talk remember when i was yeah, talking, it, making, it, 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 did, it did berate your attorney Uti. at some point in the proceedings it was like yo why are you? It, i'm paraphrasing but it was berating him Uti, why are you allow, allowing him to make so many of these mistakes or whatever to mess with the procedure you are here you are supposed to advise him at some point he did say that to to your to your representative but yeah. i want to go to your last statements in yeah. your withdrawal you hinted that there is a b- greater conspiracy that involves the presidency in the sense of Mayiwa matter. What were you talking about? Yeah, it's on record. Uh, 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 it's on record. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and I agree. I said the consp- uh, the plan, the hashed in the highest office, number one office of this country, and mm. then we know who's number one, you see, and then, yes, I've said it. And uh, I stood with it. And then even today, I stood with what I've said. Why? Anyway, what were you saying? A day or two days later, uh, this is a serious allegation to the office of the president. Yes. Yes. And then he considered like that. That's why he didn't want to waste uh, 48 hours without him having uh, replying to this and bringing to the public to say, look, what if he's talking about? I don't know. This guy cannot substantiate and everything. I believe from my background, I'm from the police and not only from the police, but the nature of the thing is that once you say the allegation, allegation must always be to find out whether uh, they are true or not. Uh, there must be investigation, isn't it? So every time when I say something very big, I expect that there will be investigation. Mm-hmm. And I'll always cooperate with the investigation to prove what I said. Mm. Yes. So, so you stand by those words. Oguchi, this is a conspiracy and there is involvement with the presidency. I stood by those words until there was a, a media statement from the presidency. And then they will say, uh, those are unsubstantiated. Therefore, knows very well that the president is not in the court. He's not a lawyer. He's far from that. I should know the separation of powers. Mm-hmm. You see? Yes. Um, then, I responded. I responded. Mm-hmm. I jumped on the bandwagon. I attended to that. And I say, the subject of my letter, I said, Put in the record, Advocate Malisala Daniel Tefu put in the record straight in relation to the allegation to the presidency. And the individual, individual, I'm referring to the president himself. Remember, there we talk about the two institutions institution and individuality. You say the presidency is the whole presidency, including the deputy president. Mm-hmm. You see? Because what's normally be done by the president, the deputy should know what was done, but somehow it will also, by extension, implicate even Mr. Didi Mabusa. And I said, when you talk about the presidency. And then the individuality, it will be referred specifically to President, His Excellency, President MC Ramaphosa. You see? So is that. Then I responded. Uh, for the 84 paragraphs, that letter was sent on the 15th of July. And then within 24 hours, I got the acknowledgement of the receipt of the letter. Mm-hmm. And I was advised that the letter is uh, accordingly directed to the relevant office of the president. Remember, I emailed the letter to the public office of the president and the private office of the president. So if it missed this side, this side it goes in. See, I don't want it to to be missed, and I got it, and I was assured. Um, yeah, at the moment, the things are being attended to, mm, and you yeah. stand by those words. The things are now being attended to, and this is private. Now. Okay. Yeah, I cannot tell the public what is happening between me and the president. I respect that office. Mm. Yes, not the. Uh, uh, People will think like, this person is mad. Talking about the president like the president is not a human being. The president can make a mistake. Yeah. He's a human being. You see? And people just used to 
how more accurate like when you say president did one two three it's like you have committed a, bl a blasphemy the biblical crime to talk about the president <laughs> no yeah all right no no thank you so much for indulging me on that um yeah i think we've actually exhausted a lot about the case and i think that whoever was tuning in for that will be satisfied up to this point so i sure. appreciate you for that um i thought that you are barely speaking until you explained to me that you're not barely per se but you are debele uh, where were you born and um why not why are you Marisela Tifu, if you're not petty. I'm born by the Ndebele woman and Ndebele man of Mandebele uh, Agam Letlan, Zebidiela Ndebeles. You see? So from both paternal and maternal sides yeah. are the Ndebele speaking people. You see? And then I was born Christian uh, Malesala Daniel Tifu. I've taken after my my father's brother. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I'm Christian after him. Yeah. And yes. where was this? In, in Limpopo. In Limpopo. Specifically. Yes. So, and... Uh, 1960s, 1970s? Uh, 1991. When no I was way. <laughs> <laughs> you okay. can't be one year the younger. The 12... Me, I'm 1990, so you, you are significantly... You are 1990? Yes. Uh, Kintuana in 1990. Yes. Yeah, on the 12th of uh, April. Sure. Yeah, uh, yes, 1970. Mm -hmm. mm. I'm, uh, your, I'm, I'm, I'm sharing your son. The star. I'm sharing the star with uh, Jacob Zuma. Okay. It's the, the photo of, uh, <laughs> uh, it was 19... No, 2006. We had a pre-birthday in one of the... Uh, you share the same birthday with him? Or the same star? Not that day, the, the, the month and the day. Okay. The star. All right. Yes. So then, grow up there. In Popo. And in Popo. Then, I'm actually, I'm cosmopolitan. Um, what does that mean? Um, after my birth in Polokwanito, my parents, my father was working at uh, Watville. At Hewlett's, you know Hewlett's? Yes. The sugar company. The sugar company, yeah. Yeah. Is, it, was it, is, is it Whatville in Kezidan? No, no. Whatville. The, what? the, the, the uh, uh, industrial area in, in Binoni, next to Binoni. Oh, okay, sorry. I'm yeah, from Cape Town, so I wouldn't, I would not. Oh, okay, yeah. So he has been working in the Hewlett's, the, the sugar company. Mm. Yeah. So um, I'm told, according to history, he started to work there um 19... 65, 66, that's when he started working there uh, in that company. Mm. And my also, my mother was also working there with him. And then after, like, uh, I was born, um, a year later, we came to Tembisa. I grew up in Tembisa. <laughs> I would not have known. I love, I love Tembisa. As in, yeah. yeah, I grew up in Tembisa and then um, when I was about to start school, this is Tembisa in the 1980s. Tembisa, as you grow up, this is Tembisa in the 1980s, in the 70s, in the 70s. In the okay, 70s. all right. And yeah. how was it? Is it a, um, a squatter camp at the time? What, what, is, what, is, what is the even the tribal no, composition? Well, no, I was sitting in the, in the house. Okay, oh, yeah, no, I'm just My saying, like, at the house uh, at the meeting, sure. So, there were areas where there were houses in Tembisa at the time in the 1970s, uh, there was no. It was not uh, dominated by sheikhs. No, no. I was sat uh, in meeting, like I said. Sure. And where I was staying, it was like there is a school across. So now, when I was about to go and start schooling in the 70s, ne? no, in 1976, there was also where I, I was staying. There's a, we always stayed across, there is a soccer field and there's a big school. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That's where the first victim of 1976 riot happened to be there. Somebody was neglected there in that uh, soccer field where I stayed. Hence, by by Abashali, the community, mm -hmm. or was Nick doing the necklacing, if you can remember? Yeah, there was a community. Okay. There, yeah, and the, 
the school uh, the school uh, people children so sort of because it was a high school there yes so now when I start school in uh, 77 mm. uh, my grand uh, my grandfather grandmother they said no this boy should not start schooling there he must come here because after they've seen what happened in 76 yes yeah and, and where is point. your grandfather is at the time he was in Pulukwana. yes he wanted to, to escape what's happening in Johannesburg in, in, in yeah in Houthi. okay yes so that's where I started there then I become umtana wa mkulu no no koko okay yes. that's how I've been and normally I want to never babu mkulu never koko they are so blessed you know and they are very tough they know life yes so, so they, they didn't spoil you yeah no jealous town I was so spoiled yeah yeah they wouldn't want someone to put a hand on me eh? mm-hmm. yeah that person can be killed <laughs> and more so I was the first uh, I mean my father is the first one to marry he married before his brother okay yeah even though I, he's younger than his brother yes okay they were three uh, my father's in the middle there's uh, his brother and he's the younger brother mm. so he's the one in the middle so now I was the happened to be the first born grand son and I was so loved mm. yes I was so spoiled yeah. I was I was I was Limpopo for your grandparents is this rural Limpopo do they have cattle do they have uh, chickens what what is the setting there yeah they were cattle yeah I've looked after my I mean, my grandfather and uh, the cattle and then I started with you graduate just like in the soccer uh he said there is a the B squad that start like the the grooming side yeah before you go to the to play for the to A's. the A team yeah yes you <laughs> see so now how do you start there you start looking after the goats yeah yeah you see <laughs> then this is all right you go they don't go far then as you graduate you graduate then you look after the cattle now mm. you can go the distance now you see yeah mm. and i was good in looking after that you see I was very good to what, and I loved that life. To what extent did you do your schooling there? It was primary and higher education and then you came back to Joburg for university. Um, it's the primary and then high school. I did primary at the local uh, primary school, mm-hmm. the village. And then, therefore, after then for the, my, my form one, you see, I remind you, you see. For one is what is high yes. school. High school. Yeah. Uh, the, it was also the local uh, high school. It's a communal. It was the three villages. When you say communal, you mean boarding? Like people stay there, sleep there? No, no. The uh, the community school. Okay, all right. Built by the three villages. Okay. Yeah, the children from three villages were attending that school. Sure. It was in the middle of three villages. Yes. Yes, you see. So that's where I schooled. And then when I started from one, that's where I started this life of work. Uh, during the school recess, I'll come and work uh, at my father's place here in Prakpan. Mm. Yeah, you know Prakpan, East Rand. Yes, yes, yes. Yeah. There was also, um, there's a house there. Yo, you're from the East, right? Yeah. You know, Prakpan, you would know Prakpan. <laughs> Okay. No, good. not Prakpan. Uh, uh, Tsakani. Tsakani. Prakpan is a town. She knows Tsakani. Tsakani. She, she knows. But uh, how on earth you don't know Prakpan? Prakpan is town. Eh? <laughs> Next to Springs. You see? But I stayed in Tsakani. Mm-hmm. In you know, it's Katlehong. It's hmm? Katlehong. Yeah, Katoras. Yeah, yeah I, I used to go there. Hey, I got uh, some cherries there. <laughs> okay. I used to. Yeah, um yeah. you no, said I'm married now. You said something wife. interesting I about hope my wife is not going to see this. Oh, uh, she will see. Someone is going to send her the screenshot. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I, I realize the implications of what you've just said. <laughs> yeah, but no, I, I mean I lived the life. She yeah. knows that well. Um you said that you started your school your your higher education in university whilst you were in the police. So uh, did you did you graduate matric and then police or what happened? Okay. How did you join the police? After my matric, I went to uh, they were calling the Putatswana by that time. I think somewhere in ninety two. Mm. Yeah. But Putatswana is an independent state within South Africa led by uh, Dr. Mangope. Yeah. Okay. I went to do. I never wanted teaching. 
in my mind it was uh, either journalism investigative one but by that time i was already make uh, make up my mind because uh, i wanted to be a lawyer to make sure that i protect uh, vulnerable people <laughs> you see because at one stage when i was still young at home and he spent a period of two months uh, then i was so inquisitive He two was, months at home yeah, not going to work injured. yeah okay. he was injured you see okay that's why it would be alarming in that he's usually at work now for two months is, is, is at home yes because he was seriously injured and then um, when i happened to uh, uh, understand he was assaulted by his boss mm. yeah that's where i become when i look the pink man ish, it's not nice you see as young as i was yeah. you know When I go with my parents to go somewhere, I see this young boy, white man. I'll look, look. <laughs> yeah, because your father is did this to my father. Yeah. You know, people undermine this fragile mind of the children. You see, I remember as young as um, eight or nine years, that thing is still in my mind but i don't like this color because of what they did to my father mm -hmm. you see it came from there mm. yeah and when i grow i grow when i grow then i see the most and i was arrested at one stage when i was 10 years mm. i was in town I yeah uh, actually when i grow at my i was like bigger than my age When you see there In was a time. size yeah okay. you see there was a time so myself i'm growing young every time you know <laughs> you see my photos when i was uh, that tender age it's like it's my brother now this person you see yeah yeah yeah, yeah. <laughs> you see no it's what is happening to me yeah uh, yeah uh, it's not like i'm positive but uh, it, all right i um, do some exercise and everything and my wife is a, is, is a chef eh? She knows what, like when I go to court, when I come back, she look at me. Like, okay, I want to cook one, two, three, four for your mood. You can be sharp. Oh, okay, nice. Yeah. That's yeah, that's, that's a see. great benefit. Yeah. If that's what happens in your household, that's yeah. a great benefit. You see. Jeez. And you can't believe my wife doesn't look, uh, doesn't watch this case. Oh, she's not aware what's happening. No, she, no, she doesn't. She watch. knows a bit. She doesn't watch oh, because okay. she said, uh, "Look, when I met court, I'm like this animal." <laughs> she will say. You're not my wife. I mean, you're not my husband. Yeah. Yeah. It's not you that I know. You see? Because I am got a fairly young I've got a fairly young family. With my my younger, How long have you been married? So my younger uh 2012. Okay, 10 years. Yeah, 2012. Yeah. So, um the youngest member of the family is uh, will be is four years and it's a it's a girl eh? mm -hmm. yeah so if i'm not at home and they are having their supper she said until no, no i'm waiting for papa to come and feed me you can eat guys you see yeah she's like that yeah yeah there are, she's got the two brothers sure yeah so in total you have three kids with your wife yeah currently yeah and they are all The girl is the last one because they're all cesarean by sure and i was at the hospital eh? they all look first see me i see them that's why we are so bonded yeah yeah you see. you're enjoying it fatherhood like is it something that you because it it's seems something. to me that you what, what how old were you with your first ever child i think is that no let's not talk about this the secrets outside. okay yes. all right yeah but yeah. you're enjoying this family life that one is sub judy <laughs> Yeah, 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 I I get it. Yeah. yeah. So, no, I enjoy this. Yeah. Why? I never had this tender love from my childhood. Yes. My father was far from me. Yes. As much as my grannies uh, loved me so much, but my own parents, my mother, my father were far away from me. You see? But now I don't want to be this absent father. Yeah. Yeah. So, I remember at one stage the first born We were in Cape Town. And by that time, he was like um, 
four years, three years, four years, somewhere there. You see, we are so bonded. Then we were somewhere in. Okay, I don't want to sell the names of the shops. Ne? No, I'm not going to pay you. No, no, don't worry. You can we see. are there by Canal Walk, you know that... Uh, yes, I'm from Cape Town. Cape Canal Walk, yeah. Century City, yes. Yes, Canal Walk, <laughs> that biggest small ammo. I used to work there, yeah. that's my first job. Is it? <laughs> yeah, at the uh, Tasha's. Yeah. 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 So, we were eating, like, there were white people there, here and there, and then, you know, sometimes white people uh, like to be so inquisitive, looking at this family. The white sometimes, they don't think they the the white, the African people, they've got this tender love. They can get together and like, they've got the child, they eat, and enjoy. You see, they think it's only they think for the white. So they were having that inquisitiveness. So at one stage now, the mother stood up and go to the loo. Mm -hmm. I left behind uh, uh, with, the, with the boy. He was having, sitting on his chair. You know, that special chair for the children. Yes. To join the table. Then we pr proceed eating, eating, just fine. She came back, she sit down. Like, when she left, it's like, nothing's happening. Just continue. I was with him. And then it was my turn. Maybe after 10, 15 minutes to go to the loo. Yeah. I stood up. Then once I say, hey, she nearly fall. He nearly fall. You see? The boy. Yeah. Yeah. Because you want to go with me. <laughs> you don't want to say, hey, those were they look. What's happening? They say, oh. The mother said, no, it's, it's like this. You see, I have to take him Everywhere and I go. go with him. Yeah, then we yeah, come back. Yeah. Said, no, there's no. Said, that's how bonded we are. Yeah, it's a special connection. Yeah, yeah. you see, it followed with the uh, younger brother and the the daughter as well. Mm. All material time I've been in the maternity in the operation. I couldn't get in there. Yes, I know you are too African. Yeah, like, but no, no, it's not about African. Not, it's about no, I was, yeah, I was about to explain. Like when, in 2012, with my daughter, I have one child. My daughter is 10 this year. And in 2012, yeah. when she was born, like, I, they couldn't allow me to go there. But I was glad that they didn't allow me to go. Because, uh, <clears throat> like, I don't think, I was 22 years, I was still too young. I don't think I would be able to handle it. I, don't, I didn't know what was, I was going to see anyways. Mm. Yeah, but I was there. Like, I was there. I was in the vicinity there. As soon as she was born, then I was allowed. Uh, I, I went inside. I didn't want to yeah. go. No, me, uh, actually, there is uh, this connection. Mm. with a doctor then considered consider to be the family doctor uh, the the gyna sure yeah the one said no because even during that time when she has to go and for checkup and everything i'll go with her to the doctor yes yes yeah you see yeah the doctor is calling me a strong man he's, he's an african <laughs> man he's a, yeah he's a, yeah the doctor the gyna yes yeah. yes so well, the way wife, not everyone does that not everyone goes there all the time yeah, I don't know for that purpose or just look me being a strong. Yeah, I think it, it includes that. Yeah. Because uh, like uh, before we go there for the ops, né, there is their own room that where we wear these things and everything. An like, apron. Yeah, apron. Yeah. yeah. I've got all the photos of that. Yeah. Even when the child, uh, you know what? I respect these people. You know. I can't imagine. Doing this to me, my stomach. Someone is operating you. Yeah. You see? Yeah. yeah. Then, then, I don't know, it will be fine. By that time, you say, you'll have to just talk like uh, your wife is if nothing's happening, but they are busy. You see? So I'm saying I couldn't go there. Yeah. Then next time, I say, hey, hey, yeah, come, take. I go and take. You know, that feeling, accepting this innocent creation. Yeah. In this miserable world, you see, this one, she, all we often uh, joke like uh, I've seen them all before you. They, you might have carried them nine months, but I'm the one you're the first one to who see who met them before you. <laughs> <laughs> you see, I'm the one coming to tell you that now, nah, yeah, yeah, we've got the boy, yeah. You yeah. feel like you, you're good now, like you're done, or you still want more? Have you thought about it? <laughs> no, we're enough, yeah. We are <laughs> yeah. Uh, what's left now is for me to make sure that I groom them uh, as much as you know. There's no school for parenting. Absolutely. You always just pray that God give you that uh, knowledge and that uh, actually is like uh, no. The God encompassing you. 
You see? Mm-hmm. And on the, the spiritual side and otherwise is taken care of by God. But we have this ability to nurture them uh, physically. I mean, in terms of feeding them and then teaching them. Uh, because everyone, even those people who are today are um, what when the child becomes so unruly and everything, mm-hmm. it's not, there's no parent that will teach uh, the child how to be unruly. See? Mm. Yeah, I often take the words of uh, uh, Chico Twala. I respect him that man. Yeah, yeah. I'll say, no, you know what? If my child did this, even if there was a, 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 um, the hang pal, I will support that. Mm. Because I didn't teach a child how to be, I mean, to be a, 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 a criminal or to be a murderer. You I see? think you can play a contributing factor. Mm. As a parent, your negligence can play a contributing yes, factor. Yes, yes. Because I think there's a... I think the country is challenging enough. Being black in this world is challenging enough that you have to hustle for money, hustle for employment. You're so busy that you fail to parent because yeah. you're not there. Some people work from 7 a.m. until 7 p.m. Yeah, yeah. They have absolutely no opportunity to parent their kids. I think there's always a contributing factor. We can say implicitly that no parent sends their child to do crime, mm. but there's always a contributing factor. Like yeah. there's there's always like I was neglected, mm. and I know that as a result of the negligence led me to gang violence in Cape Town, blah 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 blah. Mm. But everything turned out fine oh. for me. Were well, you a member of the gang? Um, well, township gangs. Do you know how to shoot? Uh, uh, the risk of incriminating myself. <laughs> no, uh, I, I no, just, I won't arrest you. I, I'm, I, I, I'm, I'm, I'm just making people. an example. Okay. Uh, yeah. But then, yeah, that is true that I was neglected. That's why you then enter into those groupings. Yeah. Um, there's always a contributing factor. Mm. Uh, but let me let's wrap up then. Yeah, that thing that I uh, said we'll come back to it. You know. Oh yes, yes. For assault. Because I wanted to go there. For assault. What happened? Uh, what were the circumstances? She was a law-abiding citizen. So even now, <laughs> but those two things are a contradiction. You arrested him for assault, but you're confirming. Oh, no, I'll tell you. <laughs> ah, but you're talking no, no. about it. We are, he, we are he here had, now. He had a guy. I mean, um, he I've hide. seen him on camera, and he knows this. There's a YouTube video of him on camera. Mm. This is probably the 1990s. He's brandishing a gun. He's, he has a free relationship with a gun. Is that, it? It's 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 like yo. This is he has it like. The way I'm doing it with my hand, he was playing around with it. There's a YouTube video that I saw maybe 10 years ago of him and talking. Yes, I think it's in the 1990s, talking about the fact that he's got a good relationship with guns. He knows politicians and stuff like that. But he's being, he's, he's not um, forthcoming with everything, but he's, he's giving you hints mm. that he knows people and stuff okay, like that. Yeah. No, I was a police officer in Santin by that time. Sure. Yeah, so there's this guy came and report the um, assault so he came first time my shift was was off people didn't uh, came now i come to report chico assaulted me this, uh, blah blah the police didn't want to help him this guy they didn't want to open the case why was he drunk what, no why? because it was chico hmm. you see that's revealing yeah and then he came back the second day. Second day, I was at work. Uh, and I was told that yesterday, he cried so hysterically. Yeah, because he saw him, saw him, saw him, making like a, 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 in the church office. Yeah, all theatrical issues, uh, things. Yeah, and that it was wrong, really. I mean, um, the second day he came, then uh, he was there. It was like, People didn't want to, they just wanted to hold him long, you see. Yeah, but ultimately, I was called, I approached, then I hear the story. So no, open the case. Take the statement. I took uh, to one of my colleagues. Mm-hmm. Then he, the case was open. Yeah. Then, later on, uh, he had to be called. I was the one. By that time, I remember I was working in the detective. They call it a crime crime office. We were doing like a preliminary investigation. Mm. So I was the one who was having the case. Yeah, so he, uh, I called him. He came to the station. Then I explained to him this uh, situation. Mm. Yeah. No, he didn't have a problem. I said, no. I informed him. I'm going to arrest you. I'm going to detain you. 
but I'm not going to refuse the bail. Once you are in the cells, we give you the chance to phone your lawyer. Yeah, there was no hustle. Mm -hmm. You see? Yeah. And you are arrested. I remember him. he came up with uh, uh, Doc Chebeleza, the late Sesinyaka, and all those things they were there. So we talk, uh, I said, guys, but I'm, unfortunately, I have to do my job. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And, but okay. I'm not going to deny the bail. Then he got in, he's on the SAP 14. You call it where you write the arrested people. Mm. Yes. Then, not so long, the, then they found the lawyer. The lawyer came and then he's released. How because was it was the assault. How was, yeah, I was about to ask, how was the state of the person who opened the case? Was he bruised? Uh, you were not there, you're saying, but did you meet him? No, eventually? I saw the guy. But uh, the fact of the matter is that uh, he didn't deny the assault. So he hired this guy to do the garden for a day. When he's supposed to be paid, that's where there was disagreement to extend that Chico assaulted him. I know. Yes. So, so the guy now, did the gardening. Yeah. And he's supposed to be paid. Yeah. Then there was, a, you know, no, that was the the hearsay, their story. Okay. But the issue is that Chico didn't deny assault. And he gave his reason why he did what he did. But that cannot stop uh, uh, the law to yeah. unfold. Absolutely. Yes. So it was me who arrested him. He's one, he was one of my biggest arrests when I was still in the police in Santé. Yeah. See? Yeah. My second arrest, biggest were, arrest. So there were no consequences for you? Because there's a perception that Chico is powerful. You can't arrest him. You were not consequenced or negatively consequenced as a result of you doing a job. No, to be honest, no. Like I said, he was cooperating. Okay. He acknowledged that he did that. And the guy came to the police station to open the case for assault. Then if he's like this, no, guys, uh, therefore is fine. If that's how you feel, no, sir. He goes into the cells. Then he did, we did the, the admin, everything. Then say, brother, phone your lawyer. Uh, the lawyer was, the lawyer came, and then I didn't refuse the bail. He was given the bail pending the appearance at court. Mm -hmm. Yes. He uh, was next, found next guilty Monday, and was fined, Monday. or what happened? I never followed that case. Yeah? Uh, but you're supposed to be the state witness or whatever. Like your mm. involvement in that case would have been that you are supposed to go and testify. No, they might have dealt you. The, no, no, I cannot go and testify. Remember, I was not there. <laughs> I was just a police. Mm. Yeah. So you, it, there is to, no to, need for you to, to present be there. The, to present the target at court and everything. There's, there's never. No but now I was uh, like, it did not end up with me anyway. But I did arrest first. Okay. Myself. Yes. You see. Yeah. And the other person, the highlight of my career in the police, again, okay, is what we're talking about. Yes, yes. Okay, yeah. But I hope these people are not going to come and beat me now. But uh, and you we've, have a, we've you have a young in, family. We have makeup. Um, you have a family. Yeah. The second arrest is uh, Lavas Mutala. There was this club, <laughs> night club. Yeah. Club. Let me let me tell the audience. So, Lavas Mutala is a former Bafana Bafana and Mamelo de Sundowns left back. Um, at his height, he had tinted hair. Uh, he was a very good left wing back for Mamelo Sundowns. He won maybe two league titles. He played for Bitvers Verts, which was Verts University, and he also played for Jomo Cosmos. He played a few times for Bafana Bafana as well, maybe five or six, maybe up to ten times, but not a lot, uh, because there was very good competition on left back for Bafana Bafana in the 2000s. Lavas Mutlana. Yes. Lavas Mutlana. Just get close to the mic. Yeah, I arrested Lavas Mutala at the. You may not know because you are from Cape Town. Yes, yes. Yeah, in Santen. This club, no, call it uh, Calabash. I've heard of it. Yeah. Calabash, the intersection. The, the place and all in of, the, the, of the high society. Yes. The, yeah. Yeah, Lavas has uh, just. Um, you know, you know Lavas. It's Lavas. <laughs> so, and then he. Also, it was a sort. Yeah. Then we went there and then um, arrested him. Brought him to the cells in Santin. And then, no, every time, it depends, you know, on your approach. You see, on the people. Yeah. So, but he wanted to be difficult. So, no, don't be difficult. Because once we become difficult, it's not going to be nice. You see, let's cooperate, let's work together. Then he did. We went to the police station, we locked him. The following day, then he got the, he got the bail. He's still a high-profile player at the time. 
he was in still in sundowns mm -hmm. sundowns yeah. that's a high profile yeah, yeah yeah and then in sundowns the last one he was bobby mutabu <laughs> you are arresting football people <laughs> yeah what happened what were the, the same place actually intersection Uh, Now, let me Calabas. go back to the Calabas. audience. Yeah, sorry. Calabas. Hey, man. Let me go back to the audience. Big man, man. No, <laughs> not, not everyone knows football. So, Bobby Mutawong is a Kaiser Chiefs football manager. His father, Kaiser Mutawong, is the owner and the founder of Kaiser Chiefs. Bobby Mutawong has been the manager of Kaiser Chiefs since the early 2000s. In 2021, uh, his brother, Kaiser Mutawong Jr., was instated at Kaiser Chiefs as a director because a lot of the fans were not happy about Bobby Mutawong and the players that he was signing for Kaiser Chiefs. As we speak, as we're recording, Kaiser Chiefs has not won any trophy in the last seven and a half years, which is a record in Kaiser Chiefs history. Continue, sir. Yeah, no, it was about uh, the same calabash, you know. There are a lot of things happening there. Yeah, he was just... Uh, uh, we found him with um, an authorized... He was in an authorized position of forbidden stuff. Yeah, <laughs> let's just end it there. <laughs> you see. So, that's why I said... Uh, initially I said no Chico is a law abiding citizen these people they never give me a problem irrespective of their how they conceived by the people at the higher stages you know I mean uh, when you are on the wrong side of the law you are on the wrong side of the law the law must take its course yes you see that's me mm. yeah in my career of 19 in the police Maybe I might have arrested like not more than 10 people. Eh? And my arrest, not, I was not just arresting people for the sake of uh, feel like, eh? like uh, for example, I never hit a church. I'm not buying your face or because this thing of yours is going to be watched by the people. The only uh, church I took just one when I was in Santa. You see? I was uh, curious was about that. It was not Georgia. It, you know, what happened? Eh? This person <laughs> was arrested by the traffic of uh, uh, Jopek Metro. Mm -hmm. You remember, uh, you may not remember, the, met, uh, the Metro, Johannesburg Metro, or all the metros in the, all the cities. Yes. These people were former security at the park. You see, when they arrest you uh, as a driver, and then you were like, um, they arrest you for something, these people cannot write the, the statement. You know, that guy, they brought the guy there on Friday that they arrested on the freeway. Mm -hmm. You know, the statement was two paragraphs. Uh, I was driving, following this car. It was driving zigzag. And then I stopped the, uh, the car. The driver has come out. He's got the red eyes. And then he, he's smelling the liquor. And then, uh, yeah, that is the end of the statement. Can you take that statement to court? The prosecutor will look at you like you are stupid. Mm -hmm. Yeah, they brought that guy. Yeah. All right. Um, welcome back, everyone. Uh, as we wrap up the video, thank you very much if you're here. Uh, after two hours of us engaging, I thought that it was going to be very important that we humanize uh, Advocate Defo. You know, people, is, uh, people are made memes on social media. Uh, clips of you are cut and chopped up. Whatever your slip up, uh, a slip of the tongue you have in court, that becomes a meme and millions of people share it. Um, what does the future hold for you then, um, since you've withdrawn from this case? You said that you're going back to be a watching brief. What does the future, future hold for you in that court and in your life generally? Uh, yeah, thanks. In the court, this court, um, like I say, after um, uh, what has been said as a reason for me to withdraw, um, I said what I said, like uh, as you mentioned in the issue, the main issue to the public I know is this one of uh, uh, accusing the office of the presidency. Mm -hmm. Yeah, like I said that uh, myself and the president were smoking uh, peace pipe now. Um, by the way, I know president personally. Hmm. When I was working in Fairland police station, um, president was there working as a reservist like for four hours. He was still in the business by that time. What does working as a reservist mean? Uh, he will give you four hours. Of what? Of uh, Handling firearms or what? No, he will come normally start late, like 
the reservists, man, you know, these people uh, call the reservists, they just give extra job, like uh, give him four hours. Maybe you can be there, work from eight until 12 or work from six until um, until 10. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yeah. The reason actually uh, the president came to give his service as a, um, they call it, yeah, they used to call them the block watch. You see? So they patrol like a private people. Or oh, Ramaphosa. Yeah. He was Patrolling still, people. He was in, still in the business by that time. So he will come uh, start at around six uh, late. So and, if uh, he's in business, we can argue that he is a millionaire at the time. So why yeah. would he need to do patrol? The reason was that uh, President Ramaphosa has been, he's been a victim of the butlery. There was a butlery three times at his house, of which <laughs> I attended. I attended two. So the farm is not the first time. The farm is not the first time. <sighs> and he reported the butleries here uh, while he was still a private man. But I'm surprised when I hear that he didn't report them a uh, palapala butlery. But I don't understand because he's got the experience, that man. Mm. See, so, so I'm still surprised that Palapala Pala was not reported. That is a dereliction of the duties as a president, isn't it? But I think maybe some we should consider one thing: uh, president can have the the defense. Why he himself didn't report? It? Because he's a president now. You see, by then he was not president. That's why he was able to come and report it, and then we can be able to go and attend it. You see, so. Now, maybe the reason now can be that, look, there are people. I'm now watching. I'm presenting over the country. I don't have the time to go and report the butler here in the farm. There are people who are working, the manager. They are the one who should go and at the Vela Vela police station and report. You see? Yes. You know, you can have uh, many reasons mm -hmm. why he himself did not report that. So you're going to continue with the watching brief just back to your future and the case? No, this case it has to be finalized. It has to be finished. Mm. And the way that, uh, um, like any other case, there's no case that can just be there forever. No, there's no such a thing. This case has to come to an end. And it will be ending in the manner that the people of South Africa will know what happened in that house. So the current one could be dismissed. The one at court. Yeah, the current one in trial could be dismissed then. No, those people are just going to be uh, discharged. That's what I'm saying. Yes. But new accusees cannot be called under the same current trial, under this docket. No, we no. would need a new trial for that to happen. No, you know, already it's common cause that uh, each and every case docket has got its own uh, pair of suspects. Yeah. Yes. So the 375 that are now uh, following it now, the pair of suspects are those people who used to stay in that house there. Mm. Yeah. Actually, there's already indictment. It's just not been signed. Oh, okay. Indictment, uh, say, Kelly and others. You see? That's indictment of uh, uh, 375. You see? All right. Yeah. And with regards to you, um, what's your day-to-day looking like now you're going to accept other cases how long how long how, how is the length of time um between you and you going jumping onto the next case i'm busy want to take a break or what no no i'm busy doing the case okay yes no like i said uh people it's just that this case came to the public eye you see i'm not jimmy came yesterday obviously like uh, you, you yeah. you've, you've told your story in this yes. video i'm a lawyer and yeah. then um um, I'm not a joke, as people may see me to be. And now we start to have, you know, it's so nice. Or it's so, um, I, I think the weird is a deep way to say it. It's, um, <laughs> it's interesting. Because so what I'm saying is like when I was just saying that F weight, because I searched for the relevant weight. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. that. But you now it's, uh, it's so interesting now because uh, I say, I time and again remind the people because now, after I withdraw, there's a lot of people say, yeah, yeah it's you causing the delay. The Mayor family will never see the uh, justice because of you. You withdraw. 
People don't, don't even listen to me when I say, no, I withdraw as an advocate. My attorney is there. This case can be finalized by my attorney without me being there. You see, my attorney has got the high court appearance. It's Tobani. Uh, Tobani is my friend. When I was working at Fairland, he was also working as a reservist. And he was, by that time, he was at the uh, University of uh, Johannesburg. So he was the um, SRC. He was in the leadership at the uh, University of Johannesburg. Then the following year, I joined him at the University of Johannesburg. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I was admitted because he was SRC. When I don't have money, whatever, I said, no, that one will find. You know, the SRC are doing their job, you see. <laughs> <laughs> so that's how I was admitted. Mm -hmm. Yes, so um, now from uh, Pretoria. Remember, I went to University of uh, Johannesburg after... I've uh, been in during the time of uh, um, they call it that major of the universities. Mm -hmm. Yes, major of the universities. I was coming from uh, uh, university in Tutoria. Then it has to uh, I have a choice because I was working in Uh When I go to Pretoria, like during the time of the exams. Because I was staying in Jobek. Uh, sometimes, you know, you arrive in the class, I mean, in the uh, examination room, yeah. being tired. You see? Yes. So now, during the measure, give me opportunity. I then have to register. Uh, I mean, I have to choose the uh, University of Johannesburg. Yeah. By that time, I was uh, in my third year when I joined the UJ. Mm -hmm. Yes. So, and they took me on condition that. I was in the third year. If I was just going to start, they wouldn't uh, take me. Uh, coming from that uh, university in, in, in Tutor. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so I was admitted there and then I finalized. So I, I'm very brilliant. I'm a clever person. Not clever, man. I'm wise. I'm intelligent. Mm -hmm. Yes. So because for me, I've completed my degree in a record. Because I took five years. To complete my law degree. And how long does it usually take? Uh, it's, it's a four-year degree. So uh, there are those people. Who You're going to have to explain There that. are those people. Eh? You're going to have to explain that. How can you uh, complete something in record time in five years, but it's a four-year degree? Yeah, yeah, no, I'll explain that, you see, because I was full-time. Né? Uh, there are people at uh, UNISA. But in our lawyer, lawyer, but to your lawyer, say you need someone. No, but to your lawyer, no, I hear that. I hear that, and I love this. <laughs> yeah, you know the people. Eh? People can like have their own makeup. Sure. When they hear that, because to them, that's why I'm, I'm telling you that I'm a brilliant, I'm a genius. You mm. see, because they don't believe that someone can attend a varsity full-time when it's working, especially in the police. I see what you're saying now. You know what I'm saying? So they'll think about it. It's only UNISA that you can be a worker and then attending the varsity. Mm. So I never wanted UNISA myself because I know that there are a lot of people that when you meet them, you won't think that they're students. You think they are the lecturers because uh, at UNISA, <laughs> <laughs> you'll never finish your degree of four years in record. Yeah, yeah five years. At UNISA is a record. <laughs> Minimum at UNISA is eight years. People have been there. Like and in eight years, I can have my master's in law. Mm. But someone is still having the undergraduate LLB at UNISA. Eight years. You see. So now you are participating in the undermining of people from UNISA. No, I'm taking back what they, 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 uh, they are bringing to me. I'm taking back to them. You see. So, so okay, you wanted to know why five years, eh? Yeah. I've passed all the coursework in four years. The reason I went to up to the fourth year, it was because I was uh, also doing the research. So research needed time. So the fifth year, I was only looking for the research. You see? And from first year, second year, I've got the um, third year actually. I was happy to be at the University of Johannesburg. I had about uh, four distinction. 
Actually, my decree is like, come louder. You see? Because the constitution, I got 98%. So uh, the law contract, the criminal law, because yeah. I, I was working as a police officer. It was oh, just yeah, you, like... You literally you know, had practicals. It was, was work in the park. Yeah. Uh, the labor law, better part of my life as a working in the police, I was a union activist. I was a shop steward. Representing... Mm -hmm. This thing of representing the people, I started as early as... crew. In my... Const no, no, don't talk about the names of the people. <laughs> I can Which union? Them. Pop yeah. crew or what? No, they were, there are two, uh, there are three actually. Three main unions, I'm a police. Yeah, in the police. Okay. So yeah, I cannot specify which one, but uh, I was uh, active. And every station where I will go, people will uh, nominate me as a chairperson of the union. And I don't know what they see in me, mm. you see. So yeah, that's that. And then... Um, the labor, labor law, because of my being involved in the labor issues at work, it was also work in the park. You see? Mm. Yeah. And then after I completed my degree, I attended the law school. And then at law school, I was the best uh, labor law student mm. at, the, at the UNISA law school. They at the uh, sunny side. Yeah. UNISA. Anything next to UNISA is when I went to the law school, not my degree at UNISA. Okay. Yeah. So you are a product of UNISA? Uh, product of UNISA. <laughs> 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 Why you want to... People want to instill UNISA <laughs> in me. Eh? No, no. I cannot give a UNISA a credit. Yeah. No, no. I'm not. I'm okay. a full-time university student. Yeah. Uh, I'm uh, told that the battery is giving up. Uh, yeah. Last one, last one, last one, last one. What do you listen to? Do you have musicians that you like? Uh, contemporary jazz, yeah. Like who? Um, Jonas Kwangwa. <laughs> Shout out. All the late. He, he passed away recently? All the late. Two, three years ago? The late, yeah. Jonas Kwangwa. That one is my, is my... Do you have a favorite Jonas Kwangwa song? Yeah. Yeah, and the, uh, uh, kind of they are from the um, temporary inconvenience. Mm. Yeah, and then the the one Morwa. Yes, yes, that's a beautiful song. Yeah, that's a beautiful song. That one, when it sings, I've got this this country in me that is known by me, is seen by me. Yeah, yeah. yeah. You see, yeah. And Jonas Kwangwa is, uh, is, is my relative. It's from is the it? clan, yes. Our clan is, uh, we are Batukwa. It's, a, yeah. How d uh, it's in Devele as well. Oh, I was about to say, like, from maybe, we, we thought, uh, yeah, from, maybe I'm wrong, I, I thought it's Bedi or something like that. Yeah, that's why you are saying, it's what you are saying. You are to you to as me. well, yeah. Yes. Yeah. So it's just bit that our language is not written. It's spoken. Sure. <laughs> yeah. You know, when they say it's spoken language, but cannot be written. I, I, I see. Yeah. I see. Jonas so, Kwangwa Gemotukwa. How, how, how are you related to That's him? That's our clan. How are you related to him? Uh, through the grannies from the paternal side. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I'm trying to get a song from Spotify. Let's see. Okay. Just so our Yeah, audience, and then uh, uh, you. You must Yes, Prahu. Yeah. You love him too? And Yeah, and, and Nikati. Case me. Okay. Yeah. Let me just play the song for the audience. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Hey. Thank you so <clears throat> much. Uh, that was nice. That was brilliant. Thank you. Um, YouTube is going to send me a warning for playing other people's music on my content, but it doesn't matter. Uh, thank you very much for coming. I appreciate you. Um, took us a while um, to gather here. You see, it's YouTube is better than SABC1 and ETV because <laughs> they have to go to ad advertisements. You can only speak for two minutes and then they have to go to advertisements. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but when you go to Tina School, you may have how long? 2.36. Yeah, no. Two hours, 36 minutes. Mm -hmm. That was a session. Thank you very much for joining us. No, oh, welcome. There you go. Boom! And we're out of here. Thank you for watching, guys. <laughs>